Hello and welcome to First is Live. I'm Ross Marriott. And I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we've got Rob in the booth to say, you're welcome, Ross, for telling you your mic was not on 30 seconds before we went live, Rob. <laughs> you're welcome for telling your mic wasn't on 30 seconds before we went live, Rob. <laughs> Rob will be taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. We are continuing to explore Strix Haven here on Versus Live. We're now, you know, about a week and a half, two weeks into preview season. We've got the entire set. Yep. We have now reached the point where the rest of the community has started to show us some of their brews, whether it's on Twitter, in articles, other sort of content. Yep. Uh, and that is nice for us because it makes our job easier. And it does, yeah. <laughs> and we get to see, like, how wrong we were and be like, oh, those cards look great together. Or we see people that haven't learned the lesson yet of we've tried that, that is not good. You know? So yeah. it goes a little bit both ways. Always nice to see, every, you know, a bunch of other perspectives. Exactly. You know, yep. We can get locked in on the things that we like that, you know, get a little tunnel vision so getting some other perspectives is nice so we're going to be starting with a match of two decks that were built by other people that yep. we both uh found striking mine comes from noted brewer yeoman five. Oh yeah and it is a teamer luca deck so potentially you know making Corey a little bit jealous here i do love a good luca here yeah. and there that's for sure and we are actually putting jodzi oracle <clears throat> of arcavios onto the battlefield with luca okay a card that you know it's it's not going to take over the game immediately, but in a couple turns with some of the great spells that we can, you know, uh, cast off of it, whether it's mm -hmm. Magma Opus or, um, you know, Alrin's Epiphany and things like that, maybe cast a, a one-mana Shark Typhoon because it is non-land card that you reveal that you can cast. Okay, okay. Not just instants and sorceries. Um, cool. Uh, but that is a, a Magecraft ability. So we've got a decent number of instants and sorceries to start triggering it. I think the really cool thing about this deck is the use of Emergent Sequence, a card we saw work pretty well in a Landfall deck I played last show. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to ramp into Luka and then just get the creature to target with Luka's minus two on the way without yeah. having to do anything special. You don't have to take a turn off to cast something like Omen of the Sun or Birth of Miletus or Cycle of Shark Typhoon. Yeah. You know, you want to be ramping, casting that Luka on turn four anyway. So really makes it nice and easy. You can then interact on turn three with your opponent. Yeah, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and keep the battlefield clear. Also playing multiple choice. Another way to get a creature with Luka, but just a good flexible card. Yeah. You, know, you can dig for the Luka that you need or dig for, you know, a key spell in the late game. You can do a little bit of interacting with it. Just a solid magic card here. When What is, you know, a Luka deck, but it's also just kind of a mid-range deck. We're yeah. playing Epiphanies. We're playing Shark Typhoons. Uh, we're ramping a little bit with Cultivates and, and the Emergent Sequences. Uh, that way we can get to, you know, these eight drops naturally. We don't have to rely on Luka and Jodzi onto the battlefield. We can de mm. definitely cast it. Uh, and hopefully I get to do some sweet things with Magma Opus because you did that last week. And that I card's guess. awesome. Yeah, I, I'm excited to play with that a little bit more. So the deck I'm going to be playing is a Golgari, really mid-range deck that's focused around learning and lessons. Uh, this was brought to me by uh, William Huey Jensen. Uh, wrote a cool article about it. And we just really have a, a bunch of great removal. You know, Mortality Sphere is a card that I really think could be quite strong, you know, depending on the, the ways you can build around it with uh, different lifelink creatures, some of the pests that die, stuff like that. Um, but otherwise, we just have a bunch of removal, gnarled professor to be able to learn. Uh, we have some emergency sequence as well, because this is going to be a deck that just doesn't really run out of steam much. Because we're learning and we have so many different uh, lessons to choose from that we're going to be using our mana pretty much every turn. So a little bit of ramp uh, will not hurt. Um, deck feels like the Golgari Seasons Pass deck that yeah. did well at uh, the Pro Tour in Barcelona yeah, four yeah. or five years ago. Yeah, that does kind of a, um, a, a nice um, paradox there. And then we have uh, Beldros Witherbloom as like the huge top end, you know, and then uh, pay some life, untap everything, make a bunch of pests. Like this card seems very good, but of course it's seven mana. So it's really got to fit in a certain shell. And uh, you know, a shell with a bunch of removal, that's what I think is, is better for this than like a ramp deck. 
Um, but it would have to be one of those two, really, yeah. you know? R removal and incidental life gain. And I, yep. I can definitely imagine, you know, getting to that stage of the game with seven mana and you're at 16, 17 life or something because, you know, you've staved off a lot of their aggression with removal and yep. blocking with insects. Mm -hmm. And you just cast a 4 for flyer, untap all of your lands, interact two more times, and you're really far ahead. Exactly. Now, that's going to be a card that is not going to be very good if we're up against a hyper-aggressive deck. You're not really going to have that 10 life to spare very very often, but you know, uh, we'll see. This is the matchup where I will probably have some life to spare. And then also uh, taking our first look at Professor Onyx, you know, one of the gigantic planeswalkers of the set that you know we really haven't tried yet. So it, it'll be interesting yeah. to uh, to see this card in action. It's a card that reads pretty well. I just hadn't yeah. really you know seen. I hadn't seen an obvious home for it. Yeah, it's definitely a either. nice home for it. You yep. got a good amount of spells. You can get trigger that Magecraft ability. But you're really just this deck is interested in having that generic six mana i can generate card advantage or kill your stuff kind of playing yep, exactly and like i we're even going to see it in my next deck a little bit as a one of as the only real home i saw for the card but we'll save uh we'll save that for next round so that'll be a surprise it'll be a surprise all right rob you got any questions uh, early on in our show here <laughs> i'll take that i got yes. I, I got some uh I got Hysteus attempting to be you and then a burn on Hysteus. Um, okay. So Hysteus said, if it has a bunch of learning in it, does that make this deck a teacher's pest? <laughs> wow. And then Yargs wow. replied, <laughs> if Hysteus keeps making bad puns, does that make him Corey's pest? Wow. <laughs> hey, Hysteus, you keep, uh, you keep doing what you're doing here. We love it. We love please, it. <laughs> please stop. Don't let Corey <laughs> infect you. <laughs> Oh, uh, there's nothing real wrong with a good pun in the afternoon. You know, I really start your day off right. I stretch, you know, I make a bad pun, then I brush my teeth. You know, Tori loves it. <laughs> uh, you keep making puns in the afternoon. I'm going to need a death in the afternoon. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, hopefully you get a death in game one here. <laughs> the Jazz lost last night, so you're looking good, Corey. Oh, yeah. I'm off to a 1 0 start. I'm off to a 1 0 start. Don't, don't remind me. <laughs> don't remind me. All right. Well, good luck. I'm guessing uh, you want to go first? Yeah, I see marbles behind you. All right. Let's do it. Should be a fun one. And. Hmm. Yeah, this seems like a fine hand. Yeah, I think I can keep as well. It's a little slow, and some of our cards are going to be a little awkward in this matchup, but I think it's okay. I'll play a catch Triumph. Okay. All right. I got a tap snarl, and I'll pass to you. I will play an island and a multiple choice for one. Okay. Scry one, draw a card. Okay. Raven Lord XAX. If Corey jokes around outside, would he be having pun in the sun? <laughs> yes. Keep it up. We love pun in the sun around here. <laughs> Yeah, that was a nice versatile card. I like that for just two mana. Like that's a that's a good ability that I haven't really you know used. I'm gonna leave this on top. I think we'll we'll find a, a place to use it. Okay. Yeah. This is definitely the kind of deck that can use that turn two as a little bit of card selection. I'll play this and I'll pass to you. Make sure you hit your cultivate on three. Yeah, it makes sense. Which I just drew. <laughs> naturally, naturally. <laughs> yep. Um. How do I want my mana to go? I've got two red for Luca. Uh, I've got two blue for that. Not really super strict mana requirements here. And I already have a, a, a Triome, so I don't think it matters much what I get. Okay. Uh, let's put a forest onto the battlefield island into my hand. All right. I wish we would have drew that last turn, but... I think we'll just go into uh, Sedgemore Witch, a card I'm uh, pretty pleased about. And then I'll pass to you. Yeah, that's a neat one. Yeah. I would be more pleased if they printed a Rakdos card that cost two mana and was playable instead of 17 more three drops that yeah, are playable. Yeah, no kidding. They Rakdos does need a two drop. So I don't think we actually talked about it on the show, but how do you all feel about Ward as, as a keyword and as like a replacement for Hexproof? Uh, I mean, it's definitely better than Hexproof, because Hexproof sucks, but... Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be replacing Hexproof, but yeah. this is an ability that has existed. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say replacing, but you mm -hmm. know what I mean. Like, instead yeah. of putting Hexproof on cards. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I think it's good. I don't think it's going to be, like, an amazing uh, ability that's going to dictate it. Hey, but, it, you know, a minor inconvenience to creatures, I think, is pretty sweet. Um... Get another mountain, I guess. Okay. Uh, then I'll play this island, and I'm going to foretell. Foretell. Okay. Pass the turn. Whatever could it be? Nobody knows. 
Uh, I gotta check out one of these. Give me one second. I'm gonna like imply a heavy sigh with this one. <laughs> yeah. But Steus <laughs> said, when Ross eats ice cream, is he Ross Darium? <laughs> All right, now we're stretching it, Hestaeus. Come on, that one was bad. <laughs> you know, that does remind me that I have some ice cream in my freezer. <laughs> All right, I'm just checking out some of my lessons, seeing what kind of options we have here. Um, so we have a ton of different options. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start by attacking for three. I'll go to 17. And then I'm going to go with a Gnarled Professor. Just a nice big creature that can learn. And I'm kind of in the market for a land. So I'm just going to get uh, Environmental Sciences and pass to you. That's the two mana I get a land? Yeah, search for a land, gain life. Yeah. Which is nice. It also gains life for uh, some of these cards. Um, Okay, I'll play Allrun's Epiphany. Okay. Get myself some birds. Yep. Go to my next turn. You got it. I'm scared. Um, That's interesting. Uh play a river glide pathway okay uh i'm gonna three six eight yeah i'm gonna play a shatter skull smashing for six and kill both your things paying the three life for ward okay that'll put me to 14. that's pretty strong and i will attack for two all right you go to 18. 18. i'll pass the turn all right hmm Let's see. What do we want to do now? Hmm. Just want to play another good threat this turn. We don't have a ton of great options, but I think it's just going to be the flip side of uh, Valentine here. All right. So we got a 4-4. Four, four. Yep. And then I'm going to play a Temple. Do some scrying. Um, yeah, I think I can keep that on top and pass to you. That's a neat one. Okay, I will attack for one. Okay, 17. I will cast a Luka. Okay. I will minus two on the tap to bird. Okay. What are you going to hit? It's different every time. <laughs> Yeah, that's scary. Oh, I hit Jodzi. That's oh, lucky. lucky. Yeah, it's going to be good. Well, let's hope it's even better. I will play Emergent Sequence, Trigger Magecraft. Okay. Nope, it's a land. Okay. Uh, and then I will resolve the Emergent Sequence. Okay. Let's get a forest. That's the second land that has entered the battlefield this turn, so it's a 2-2. Two -two. Okay. And then I will pass the turn. Okay. All right. So let's start with um, environmental sciences. Get in the lane. Yep, and then I'll pay one to put a counter on this. Remember, oh, you I gain two, life. You gain two life for you that. You gain two life, yeah. yep. So I go to 19. Uh, I'll get the swamp. Play the swamp. Then I have a pretty nice combos here. Then I'll play a mortality sphere. Um... You got four in hand? I have four, yep. That is fine. Okay, and then I'll attack Luca. Yeah, the Lizette has trample at this point, so blocking is useless. Past you. Uh, 
Um, three, four, five. That's a tilt. Oh no, that's not a tilt. <laughs> it's exactly perfect. Oh, that's better. That's better than being tilted, huh? Yep. Okay, so let's play a lava glide pathway. Okay. Then I will play another Luca. Okay. I'm going to minus two on the forest. Okay. Perfect. Wonder what you're going to get. And a Jodzy. Okay. Then I'm going to play a multiple choice for four, trigger Jodzy. Okay. That's pretty Hit good. Magma Opus. Oh my God. I'll pay it for, cast it for one. Wow. I'll so deal. I guess this is technically and still in play until that resolves. Yeah. yeah. I will deal four damage to you. Okay. 15. Then I will create a 4 4 blue and red elemental. I guess we'll use a dragon for that. It doesn't fly, but. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll draw two cards. Wow. This is disgusting. So. That, that's cool. Okay. Then I'll get a four, another 4-4 four, four blue and red elemental. You bounce, and I scry one, draw a card. Wow. I am dead. Put that land on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. This should be on three. And then I will attack with my bird. Okay. 14. Yeah, 14 all. Pass <laughs> the turn. We're doing equally fair stuff this game. So hey, far. look. Ross finally gets a good clip of the day. Yeah. Was that a, was yeah. That a good turn? <laughs> I think that was a good turn. Holy I made, I made a 5-5. Five, five, I made two 4-4s. Four, four, <laughs> I dealt you four damage. I drew two cards. Yeah, that was insane. Now it's your one creature. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm dead. There's nothing I can do here. I just have some vanilla creatures and stuff, and yeah. we're I'm, not I'm, on the same I'm power in, level. I'm in hard cash shark typhoon mode here. Oh, God. The fan favorite? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, impressive stuff. Stuff. Plus Impressive two more spells. Stuff. The emergent sequence is going to make at least a, a three three. Yeah, incredible, incredible. Yeah, I definitely got to uh, be a little bit more aggressive against you. But I mean, I did have a, a quick, you know, at least three drop into four drop. But that shadow skull smashing and the double cultivate to set you up for it was uh, a little bit too much. Yeah, me, me being on the play and you not having a two, which you know your deck yeah. doesn't really get aggressive on turn two, right? Yeah, it really doesn't. Yeah. Now we we have some decent stuff, and mostly I, we want to ramp. But I drew the emergent. Uh, um, ramp spell on turn three, so that was a bit of a tea. Yeah. I was uh, I was a little worried about this deck where I'm I'm looking into a creature, but if you do that when you're tapped out, you don't really get immediate value. You yeah. just have a five five that yeah you can bounce back to your hand, and you usually have enough mana to recast it. But yeah. I think that that's uh, sort of setting yourself up to get tempoed. And the yep. sideboard probably should have something that's, you know, more immediate impact to Luka for in aggressive matchups. Yeah, like Coma probably, right? Yeah, Coma. Yeah. So that sounds reasonable. That should probably be in the sideboard somewhere. Yeah, Coma. But, but Coma still, you know, like just gets Heartless Act, so it's not great. You know, yeah. like the card for aggro matchups was always like Dream Trawler, but it's not in your colors. So it gets a little tougher there. But yeah, still, that looks pretty sweet. Yeah, still able yeah. to do some cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we're going to shuffle up for our second game. Rob, you got a question for us? Um, Hesteus would note that's a nice appearance by Ross Barium. <laughs> yes. Um, Yargs wants to know, do you think Emergent Sequence is among the best ramp spells they printed in a while, or is the land too fragile as a creature? I mean, so far we've played it in matchups that didn't have Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah. And that's going to be the big test of it, but it, it's looked good. It has looked good. Two mana, you know, Rampant Growth. Rampant Growth was just insane when I started playing Magic, you know, and, uh, you know, Farseek was the second iteration of that that was still insane. And then they pretty much went away from two mana accelerants. Uh, and this is the first one I've seen in, you know, years. So. At least went away from two mana acceleration that aren't creatures. Fixed. That aren't creatures. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. There's like Wolf of Low Haven still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's either a creature or it doesn't manifest. So yeah, like getting. I mean, and you know, Emergent Sequence is technically a creature. Yeah, uh, but in this case, you know, th that was beneficial. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for Luca, it seems sweet. So, all right, I'm gonna be going first this time. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh, clunky, 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 clunky. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I can really keep this. We're going to mulligan. We just have two, we have both of our Professor Onyxes, and then, you know, maybe I'll be hitting you with a Palaka Predation. That uh, just doesn't feel good enough. Yeah, I will be taking a mulligan as well. Okay. My uh, three spells have average CMC of seven. Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. 
Yeah, we had about the same hand. We could have been doing absolutely nothing but staring back at each other for turn after turn. I would have made a 1-1 shark on turn three. Okay, okay, yeah. Not bad. GG. That would have been GG. I had nothing Nobody for that. The baby shark. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. All right. Come on, whammies. I do like that Jodzi helps turn your ramp spells into real stuff later in the game, too. Yeah. That's always something I look for in ramp decks. Agreed, agreed. Um, yeah, I think I can keep this. Now it's just a question of what do I want to put back. Um, don't think I really need this. I'm going to go for the more long game plan here and just put this Order of Midnight back. I've got a solid hand where it's pretty easy to know what to put back. Okay. I will play this. It's Do the eight mana spell. The eight mana spell, huh? Yeah, okay, that, we'll, that put, goes on the we'll put this at the bottom. Uh, I've got a forest and pass the turn. Okay. All right, I got another temple. Don't really need that removal spell. We'll put this mortality sphere to the bottom. Uh, I'll play an island and emergent sequence. Okay. I'm going to get a mountain. It'll be a 2-2. Two -two. Okay. Pass the turn. <laughs> All right, so I guess I can remove two counters and kill that, huh? Yeah, Heartless Act does it. All right, I'll do that. Then I'll pass to you. No ramp spell for you. I'll play Lava Guide Pathway and pass the turn. Okay. I will draw. I'll play Sedgemore Witch. And I'll play this uh, Turn Timber, Symbiote Woods, tapped, and pass to you. End step, Cycle Shark Typhoon for one. Okay. Cool. <laughs> if you hadn't killed my land, it would be a Shark Typhoon for two. Then you could still win. Yeah, and then I, the, yeah, the Baby Shark is way too good. Uh, I'll attack for one. Okay, I'll take it. You're at 19. Yep. Then I have a Ketri Triome and a Portel. All right. Pass the turn. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll attack for three. I'm at 17. Okay, and then I'll crack this for a forest. And we got a Planeswalker. We got a Vivian. Uh, so I'm going to look, and I'm going to create a 3-3 three, three with Reach, and then I'll pass to you. Go, go, Vivian. Let's play a tight channel pathway, and uh, X equals four multiple choice. Okay. Do it all. So, so I have I, to... I, I scry first. Okay. And then I'll, I'll be choosing you. Um, yeah, I'll leave that on top. Okay. So I'll bounce this to my hand. And I'll get a 4-4. Four, four. All right. And then I'll pass the turn. Okay. All right. Interesting. Um. Hmm. We've got some options here. Got some interesting options. You know what I think this deck needs is Opt. You just need another cheap spell Yeah. for Jodzi. Oh, that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to start with a... Heartless Act on that. Then I'm going to tick up to get a 3-3, doesn't matter the ability because I'm going to Deadly Brew. Um, each sack a creature, I'm going to sack that token and return Fabled Passage. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty nice. Uh, then I'm going to play that and attack for three. I will go to 14. And then I'll pass to you. OK. 
Okay, have to make this play of Auron's Epiphany. Okay. Get myself some birds. Okay. Sounds good. You have two in hand? Two in hand, yep. Uh, okay, I will... Uh, let's attack for one to the Vivian. Okay. Play Luca. Okay. Minus on the tap bird. Yep. Uh, this is on three. There it is. Okay. I'll pass the turn. See if I had an opt here. Yeah. yeah. Opt would be great. I'm wondering if I want to cycle away this top card. It's quite good. Um, if I can get there. It's cute. Vivian Fable Passage gives you some selection. It does, yeah. Do kind of want to keep that around so that you can hit creatures off the top more easily. Yep. So at uh, this point, you're probably more digging for removal. Yeah, I am going to sack this. I think I'll have enough stuff going on here that maybe I should have just sacked it during my turn. I don't have a ton of creatures I can play off the top, but... All right, so we'll take a peek. All right, so... I will draw. Okay, um, well, I got Professor Onyx. Give that one a read. I will negative three. Hmm. So if I want to return the Jodzi, <laughs> I have to give up the bird. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, yeah. That is incredibly awkward. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I give up the Jodzi. Okay, then I'll attack Luca. Give up the Luca. Okay, then I'll make a reach blocker and I'll pass to you. What I do have is another Luca. Okay. So that's going to turn this bird into another Jodzi. Okay. And that's... Uh, I look at the top three, yeah. lose a life, little card selection. Those two work kind of nicely together. Yeah, they definitely do. Not feeling good about this game. Just got a tap catcher triome and a pass of the turn. Sure. This is where the the dynamic that I brought up earlier is coming into play, where my Jodzies just don't do enough immediately. Yeah. It's kind of a Luka make my thing and then hope I untap with it, which is not what you want to be doing with Luka. You want to be getting a creature that's immediately dominating the battlefield. Yeah. No, nope, that makes sense to me. Um... Okay, so I'm going to lose a life. That brings you to 18. Yep. Uh, look at the top three. Oh, these are bad. I will put this and put the other ones in the, the graveyard. graveyard. Okay, interesting. Cool one with escape for sure. Mm hmm. Um, hmm. Let's see. All right. We can start with a witch. Yep. Now I know you have a Satch more witch in your hand, right? Yeah, earlier. You do. Then I got a land drop, and I'm going to. Um, Emergent sequence, trigger, trigger. So you lose two, I gain two, and then I get a one-one? Yeah. So I go to 20, you go to 18, I get a pest. Uh, I was at 14, right? Oh, yep, sorry, I wrong. Was, like, yeah. yeah, so 12 to 20. 12 to 20. Okay, I get a two-two. Yep, and now do you have the two-mana destroy an online permanent? I do not, unfortunately. That, that would have been the perfect capper to Oh, yeah. This. Oh, yeah. No, nope. unfortunately, we do not. Oops. Um, but I will look at this. Okay, I've got I've got a shot now. <laughs> you can just, it's just going to be about what I can do. Yeah. All right, then I'll attack these two at Luca. Get that out of there. Uh, so uh, do I get punished for blocking? Uh, 
I don't think so. Okay. I'll block one. Sure. Then I'm going to make another one here. Um, and I want to play anything else. Yeah, I think I'll play Order of Midnight as well. Um, and I'll pass to you. Okay. Really want to hit a magma opus here. <laughs> Don't do it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Ross Merriam here. Uh, so I think I'm actually, even though I don't have a land to play, so I can't really get value off of the, the Jodzy. Yeah, it's still pretty good. Uh, what I can do is go, uh, one to the insect token, uh, one to the Vivian, two to the Onyx, tap down the Sedgemore Witch and the Reach token, and then attack down the Vivian. There's a problem with that line, though, because then that leaves me dead. So we shouldn't do that, actually. <laughs> I think go for that one. That yeah, sounds that good. Was, that actually leaves Corey with still with... Jesus, you have so much power. Yeah. Um, God. I did not... Um, so do I even... Do I have to go for Cultivate, then, and try to hit? What is this... Uh, what is Magma Opus going to do? I guess I could go, like... Three to the onyx, one to the insect, tap down the two tokens, block Sedgemore Witch, take four, and then I would draw a couple cards. Um, I would deal with the onyx. You'd still have the Vivian going, um, but not much I can do about that. Um, yeah, I think that I think that is reasonable. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna pass the turn. On your upkeep, I'm going to Magma Opus, trigger the Jodzy. Okay. Uh, hit Luca, which not really relevant even if I did could cast it. Okay. So three to the Onyx, one to the Insect token, tap down the two Todd Anderson tokens. Okay. And then I'll draw two cards. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I gain one life? Yes, you do gain a life. Brings you to 21. 21, yep. Okay. And you can continue. All right. You draw a card. Didn't ever move a last turn. Okay, so I want to start with Order of Midnight. Yep. Well, you can oh, yeah, I got a 414. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Forgot about that part. It does everything. Okay, well, I mean, this is probably going to be good. So I'll play a land. I'm going to minus two. I'm going to cast <laughs> Veladros and search for a creature. No clue what I'm getting yet, but we're going to search for a creature. One good top deck deserves another, huh? It stays there? Oh, you just reveal it? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. so that means that should be on top of my library, and this should be on in my in hand. your hand. Yeah, I, I would have drawn it off the opus. Okay, then I'll get a gnarled professor. Oh my god, this is disgusting. So I'm gonna learn. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's see what I want to do. Okay, this seems like a pretty easy one. All right, I'm gonna hit confront the pest. I'm gonna pay 10, untap all my lands. Brings you to 11. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna do confront for six. Uh, trigger, trigger get a token here, and that is it, so I get a pest. Returning the professor on. Yeah, return professor. Um, I will negative three. Um, and definitely attack. That is not flying, right? Correct. Attack with these two for five. That'll put me to seven. Okay. And pass to you. Upkeep, get a token. Well, that was sweet. <laughs> that was a sweet turn, y'all. Holy cow. Wow. Veladros. 
Hello, welcome. <laughs> well, these have been uh, some ridiculous games, I must say. Wow, okay, okay. I was starting to think like maybe this uh, Golgari deck is just kind of a little loose, but that gave me some extra hope. That was pretty nice. Yeah, the Belladra certainly looked uh, very powerful there. Yep. That was about you know, max you know, of that card, max potential. Yeah, that was by far the best card I could have on top of my library there, to say the yeah. least. And that is the one card I shuffled away when I had six mana was a Belladros. So luckily it came back because I kind of threw it away there for a sec. But yeah, able to cast yeah. out, final learn, get back the, the uh, just did everything. Knowledge is power, I guess, when you learn. So, all right, everyone, that's going to do it. We're split one and one here. We're going to head to the sideboard and see what we got for each other. Don't go anywhere here on Versus Live. Well, welcome back to Versus Live, where we are sideboarding in our matchup between Teamer Jodzi Luka and Golgari Learn. Mid-range, I guess. Golgari yeah, Pass. Golgari Pass. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some Pass. How can you call this Golgari Pass when it doesn't have 10 to the Pests in it? Because <laughs> there are other cards that's that like say That's like the number on. one Pest card in the set. Yeah, yeah. And you're, yeah, that's just... I don't know. That seven-drop Pest creature, that makes a Pest ever. That verdant force of Pests. Yeah. You know, that, that's a pretty big Pester. Definitely a Pesky one. Yeah. <laughs> on uh, my side of things, bringing in a good amount of interaction here between the Storm's Rast, the Soul Seers, and even the Ugin, which is sort of, you know, a ramp threat as well, but another yep. nice sweeper. Uh, cutting the shark typhoons, I think they're inefficient in this matchup, and it's not really about that. I've got to, you know, if we play that kind of grindy game, you're going to win. Yep. So I've got to get up to really powerful cards, you know, start hitting Ugin, triggering Jodzi, casting Magma Opus. Uh, the marginal value of shark typhoon isn't really going to be worth that much. It doesn't mm -hmm. limit me in my ability to set up Luka, but this deck's actually not turbo turboing out Luka most of the time anyway. Yeah, yeah. You kind of want to wait until you're at seven, eight mana, mm -hmm. and you can cast Luka, hit a, you know, get your Jodzi onto the battlefield, and then follow it up with a spell immediately. Yeah, cultivate, pay one, hit something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. even nine mana. Like, it, it, it yeah. takes a lot. So it's, it's a really late game card, so we don't need as many creatures to make it work because you can just sort of sit on them. Checks out. Uh, and then trimming one Jodzi, there's four in the main. That just seems excessive to me. Sure. And then, you know, when we're bringing in a bunch of interaction, we don't need to ramp as hard, so one Cultivate becomes a liability. Cool. For me, um, our sideboard is kind of a wish board, you know, if you will, with all these lessons. So we really want to have all of them in the board. Didn't want these to eliminate. So just bringing in Duress. Duress is going to be a great card against you. Yeah. Uh, and then siding on a couple Deadly Blows, one Order of Midnight, and then one Blex Vex Vexing Pest here. All right, ready for battle for our third game, but we'll take a question from you if you got one there, Rob. Yeah, chat wants to know what's your opinion on Luca versus Transmogrify. <laughs> um, is Transmogrify is legal here? Yeah, I think so. I would 100% rather Transmogrify in this deck. Really? Well, what, you're getting a legend, so the second Luca activation is worth very little. Yeah, unless you uh, kill the creature. Hmm. Yeah, like if they kill it in response and you, and you get to re-up or something. Or they just, you know, I Professor Onyx you negative three and uh, you get rid of that and then I, but I don't have a way to pressure Luca, then you just get to do it again, you know? I uh, Yeah, you know, that yeah. that is definitely something. Mm -hmm. um, but the other uh, nice thing about Transmogrify is one, it costs one, man, one mana less. Yep. And that's actually really important here. Because yeah, you can do that on turn three. Yeah, you can you can do it on turn three with emergent sequence. Yeah, so that's yeah. a great curve. But it also just lets you set up the Jodzi, cast a spell, pay one for the trigger. Yeah, a little bit faster, and that's yeah. really helpful. Um, and then it's a it's an instant or sorcery itself for Magecraft. Yeah, no, that actually I I, I normally am just a big believer in Luca over Jess or over and, uh, and Transmogrify. I'm, I'm with you most of the time. Yeah, but that actually sounds awesome. The thing that's the most appealing to me is the emergent sequence to do that on turn three. If you're on the play and your opponent's just like playing their two drop, and all of a sudden you have that yeah. insane you know five five in play, it's gonna be a tough game. Yeah, so uh, yeah. you know the following turn you're you're gonna lose the land that you ramped into so you'll have three yeah. mana, three lands in play that's true you yeah if you play your fourth land you play a cultivate you pay your one yeah you know you can put a new again into play yeah you can start doing <laughs> some cool stuff i like it yeah that's uh that's probably a good one chat good call on that one all right i'm guessing you want to go first i do okay all right well sand looks heinous I will keep. 
But to be fair, we're just a Mopey Golgari deck where I feel our hands are going to look like this a lot. Um, that being said, it is still pretty weak, and we're on the draw. So we can mulligan a little bit more aggressively. I'm going to mulligan here. Just really not doing much here. Two drop into a Gnarled Professor uh, doesn't seem great. Agreed. I think I need to interact a little bit, maybe duress you on a timely turn, um, something like that, maybe ramp a little bit. This deck definitely does have some mopey draws, that's for sure. That's eh, a Golgari deck. That's yeah, kind of what Golgari is known for. Yeah, mid-range decks just look like, yeah, pile of creature and removals. Hope for the best. All right, let's try this again. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we can keep this. Now, what do we want to get rid of? It's incredibly awkward, of course, but um, I think we can get rid of one of these. Yeah, I'll put one of these on the bottom and let's do it. I'll eat on a mountain. Okay. I have a... Snarl? Tap Snarls. Pass to you. Well, Snarls Barkley. Well, Snarl Snarls. So, play an island and foretell. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. All right. I'm going to play another Snarl tap, and then I got a Valentine and pass to you. Pretty weak card, but it does have the Menace lifelink, which is pretty interesting. Um, I will play a Timbercrown pathway and pass the turn. All right. All right, I'll attack for one. 19 to 21. Yep. Then I'm going to play a Fabled Passage, crack it, and then Emergent Sequence. So to get a 3-3? Three, three? Yeah, I get a nice 3-3 three, three here. Nice. Yeah, and I'll put this as the 3-3. Three, three. All right, and pass to you. Yeah, I'll play Crack Crown Pathway and Storm Thrust. All right, I kind of figured that was coming, yeah. but... <laughs> All right, nice ramp spell. That's the turn. Oops. All right, that was not a great draw. Um, so we'll just go Sedgemore Witch. No fourth land, pass to you. Ooh, I like that. I don't like that. Because I've got a pick them all. Oh, no. <laughs> so I'll scry one. Okay. Um... Don't think I want that. Okay. We're a little way off. A little ways off from hard casting Jodzi. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I will get a 4-4. Four, four. You'll bounce your creature. Yep. And then I'll pass the turn. That looked incredible. Yeah, I think multiple choice might just be good. Yeah, I think multiple choice might be pretty strong yeah. as well. Um, casting it for X equals 2 and X equals 3 doesn't feel great. But mm -hmm. casting it for X equals 1 and X equals 4 has felt quite good yeah i'd have to agree with you all right i gotta duress you okay well i've got another multiple choice which is pretty threatening yeah i also got this magma opus that you probably need to take oh god it's getting cast quite soon wow yeah but i don't know if i can just beat another multiple choice next turn you know yeah and that, if that's all runs epiphany which i assume it is i'm pretty much just dead um all right, that's uh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, Magnus Opus is just so good. Do I just have to hope by top deck uh, another duress? Hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna take multiple choice. I don't think I can beat that. And then I'm going to bring this back to my hand and pass to you. That's the Valentin. Yep. Not great. Okay, Bark Channel Pathway, get in for four. Yep. Play my Alvarez Epiphany. 17. Got some birds. Okay, things are fine. Uh, yep, you're at 17, I'm at 19. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I am going to cycle this Ketria Triome. Okay. Could have played it to make sure I have land eight for next turn, but doesn't seem that greedy. Great. Love it. Um, I'm gonna play Lava Glide Pathway. Get in for six. Okay, I'm down to eleven. And pass the turn. All right. And I know nothing about your hand except the Opus, right? Yes. 
Okay, well, that was an awful draw. AK, not a land. I'll play this and pass. Um, okay. That's pretty good. I'm in trouble. Attack for six. I will block. Uh, take two, but gain one. Yep. So you take one, go to ten. Yep. I'll cast all ends of epiphany. Okay, well, I'll mortality sphere this. Right, yep. Yep. Attack you for four. I'm down to six. I top deck two all runs of epiphanies in a row. Okay, <laughs> then I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just didn't didn't have any remote time to get anything going. Multiple choice just wrecks me. That card, that card has looked good. Yeah, it's, and yeah. it definitely seems good against decks with sort of slightly wonky curves, which is yeah. what mid range decks are, typically are, especially exactly. mid range decks with a good number of creatures. Yeah, but to be fair, most mid range decks are also adventure decks. So that's the yeah. thing that kind of uh, scares me when we get into the real world, you know? Yeah, I agree. You know, yeah. they, they get a, you know, bounce an innkeeper or whatever, you know? Even just, you know, bouncing the adventure creature itself and getting another shot yeah. at the adventure spell. If they're bouncing, yeah. you know, you can't, you basically can't cast multiple choice against Brazen Borrower. Yeah. You just return it and Petty Theft your token. Yeah, and, that's brutal. <laughs> and, you know, Giant Killer's the same way. It's bounced by Giant Killer, chop that down. Yeah, yeah. You know, return my Bone Crusher, have it for a bird is, is still reasonable. You know, yep. get an extra 1-1 one, one off Lovestruck Beast, or you can just bounce the token or a cheap creature if you want it, but... Yeah, definitely looked quite good in this matchup. Yeah. Um, didn't really get to see the Luka plan come together. Honestly, like, the the Luka Jodzi plan might be, like, it was really flashy in game one. Yeah. It was not particularly good in game two. I drew, like, I drew a million Lukas. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm following your train of thought here. I, You know what I'm more, almost more interested in is turning that into, like, a Rowan Will... Um, multiple choice kind of team or spells deck, you know, like, and like have all runs of Piffany. You can maybe still play Goldspan Dragon because that goes so well with, uh, you know, that deck's kind of game plan, but really just turn into more of a control deck that wins with Shark Typhoons, that wins with uh, multiple choices. And, you know, maybe yeah. even Coma. Who knows? I like Goldspan Dragon. I like getting yeah. up to, you know, really high amounts of mana. We saw that work really yeah. well with Magma Opus. And just think about uh, one last thing. Sorry to interrupt you. But, uh, yeah. you know, just like Cultivate on three into Will. You know, I mean, like two 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 mana removal or something on two uh, into Cultivate into just Will tick up on your only creature, make it a no two. And then the next turn, all runs Epiphany plus draw two cards off Will. Like, Cultivate and Will and Rowan is something I really didn't think to put together, but that seems like the kind of shell that would make it awesome, you know? Or turn three, Rowan into turn four, multiple choice, you know? Then you can either Cultivate or Rowan to have multiple choice on turn four um, as an effective way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in for this. Yeah. I think the Luca part of this deck was the worst part of it, but multiple yeah. choice and... Uh, Magma Opus still both look good. Yeah, I'm wondering if you even just like put the team or adventure package in a deck like that. That's a lot of cards, so that's yeah. uh, that's tough. But you know, that's interesting. I, I don't know if I don't think I would go all the way for the the full adventure package, but just yeah. having Bone Crusher in your deck as an anti aggro measure seems yeah. reasonable. Yeah, just put that card in every deck. Yeah, yeah. no kidding, no yeah, kidding, because that is the one cost you can't play Bone Crusher in that deck. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, yeah. I remember I, I when I was putting a sideboard together for it, which I had to build because Yeoman di didn't for any of his brews. How dare he! Uh, yeah, what a <laughs> uh, just need to get that call out in there before yeah, we course, end the segment. Yeah, but I went to go build the sideboard, and, and I immediately thought, I was like, oh, we can just put Bone Crusher as I, my anti aggro card. And then, I, then it, it dawned on me, I was like, no, I can't do that. You can't do creatures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did the same with like just putting Brazen Bars in my Luka deck once. I was like, okay, you know what? It'd be nice to bounce their threat, you know, maybe play it as a creature sometime, and then first Luka it into it. I'm like, oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that could have gone better. <laughs> that could have gone better. All right. Well, this match could have gone better for me, at least. But we got some more exciting matches coming up. Next round, I'm going to be playing something that's kind of I'm, I'm kind of playing the fun police right like i'm playing uh sultai ramp ultimatum um but you know with with some new cards to add but realistically not a ton you know we got professor onyx as a big um you know a, as a new target to put with vorden Clex to ultimate right away which would be pretty cool um as well as uh god what is that ramp card called again eureka Remember? moment yeah eureka oh. moment is something i really wanted to try um in the sultai ultimatum package i just think it kind of does everything 
like ramping you and finding your ultimatums. So kind of just replacing that as cultivate, see if the deck gets much better or worse. But for the most part, you know, just trying to look forward to see what standard is still kind of going to look like. Yeah. And my second deck is going to be a, a play on a current and successful deck. Mm. So it's going to be derivative of, of mono white aggro. Oh, but I'm going yeah. ores off to get some of the really cool uh, cards that were printed in Silver Quill. I like we're that. Silver Quill Silencer, Silver Quill Command. There's a card I like quite a bit. I think yeah. all of its modes are good. And we'll see if, you know, getting some more powerful cards into the deck is going to be worth l missing out on Faceless Haven. I like it. All right, everyone, we're going to take a short five-minute break, and we'll be right back with round number two here on Versus Live. Don't go anywhere. All right, everybody, welcome back to Versus Live. My name is Corey Baumeister. And I'm Ross Marion. And we got Rob in the booth. Say Yorian's the best, Rob. Yorian's the best, Rob. All right, Rob, we'll be taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games, and he will get his favorite one sent over to us. All right, everyone, we are continuing our preview season exploration. And this is the first time I picked a deck with just full-on standard in mind. I just want to see my favorite deck uh, right now, which is Sultai Ramp, um, what it would be incorporated into a standard SCG, like one of the SCG Tour Online events right away. Because we're, you know, we're going to see a lot of randomness right away. You know, maybe like some blue-red spells, desk, this Golgari Pest deck, um, you know, maybe some Luka stuff. Um, a little bit, but then, you know, the world condenses back down and the reality checks set into place that, well, you know, the standard decks that were successful before this are still just going to get some upgrades and go on from that. So I'm going to test out just exactly that by doing some just upgrades to the deck with bringing in Eureka Moment and then Professor Onyx as a nice hit to go with Vorenklex off your Emergent Ultimatums. Um, I figure whenever I can make my opponent discard a card if they don't lose that three lose three life repeat that uh, six times is probably gonna be pretty good you know yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes you deal 21 and the game's over yeah yeah might be so, good <laughs> another way to limit your opponent's options off the emergent ultimative if you show them a combo that literally ends the game you know you know you're gonna get the next best thing exactly and you know the Valky um born collects combo might just be enough you know, where you kind of don't need that. or But it, it's another option that can just be you're dead on the spot, yeah. you know? so yeah. There are times where I'm getting, you know, Allrun's Epiphany is the third card in that pile. Yep. They just give you all the creatures and say, I, you know, my battlefield's good enough. I yep. can beat that. But yeah, yeah so oh, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but yeah, like let's say I go Professor Onyx, Velky, Vorinclex. Like, yeah, there's no way you can give me a Vorinclex, right? Ultimating yeah. two Planeswalkers. And then let's say you just have one big creature, maybe two. Again, you know, exile it, get rid of a creature, exile the other one with Velky. Uh, and that seems insane, you know? So an extra little element there for us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, th that that's a, a really, really strong play to get two Planeswalkers on yeah. your ultimatum. Exactly. Uh, on my side, also retooling, you know, a, a deck from the previous season. I know Mono White Aggro sort of struggled a bit towards the end of this season. It Didn't did. Didn't do yeah. very well on League Weekend. Yeah. Uh, or in the, not League Weekend, on the, in the Call Time Championship. Yep, yep. Uh, in the standard portion of that event. So we're going to try to, you know, beef the deck up with some black cards here going into Silver Quill or Orza, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned Silver Quill Silencer and Silver Quill Command before the break, but also playing Elite Spellbinder. Uh, you know, another nice disruptive card. So we're going to be a little yep. bit more disruptive here with the Silencer and the Spellbinder. I like it. And hope to have the, you know, Silver Quill Command as a nice closer. Okay. Uh, I can sometimes just, you know, jump a creature, maybe deal with a blocker and, and get in for a lethal out of nowhere. Yeah. But also, you know, a reasonable value card. It's a nice, easy way to answer like Elder Gargaroths out of this matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for value. Yeah. Pretty cool card. Yeah. I think it's one of the better commands. Uh, and, and this is definitely a great shell for it. So. What's your favorite command out of all of them? Um, I would say my favorite one is probably, uh, is it Lorehold is Boros? Lorehold, right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would go with Lorehold. Yeah, Quadrix, uh, the Simic one, I, I, I like a lot, but I just don't know if it's good enough. I just love Dromoka's Command so much, and that's the one that resembles that a little bit, like, the most to me, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a fan. All right, Rob, you got any great questions over there while we shuffle up for our second round? Uh, I had a question from before about the um, mid-range deck you played in the last video. Yeah. And Hestaeus wanted to know, do you think that that is a deck, that style of deck can really be viable in an Eldraine standard world? I don't. 
unfortunately. Um, I do think it is just a little too clunky. I think it has to be a little bit more focused in one of the directions. I think that deck uh, either had to be a lot more aggressive or a lot more controlling. And uh, the element's just there. If you want to be th that more controlling, just play the Salta Ultimatum deck. You know, that's kind of the same vein. And if you want to be more aggressive, sure. I think maybe there's a chance for that. You know, you really lean into the pest synergies. Um, but then when you lean into that, is it better than what I was doing it with, with the Jun deck uh, on Tuesday where I had like Croxa and 10 to the pest? Probably not. So I, uh, I really wanted to try it because it was a lot of cool cards. I wanted to try out Lessons, um, but it didn't overly impress me, I, I would have to say, uh, if, I'm, if I'm speaking honestly here. Yeah, um, and I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that style of deck. You know, we've seen mid-range decks in this standard environment, but maybe you're thinking like, you know, classic rock style, though. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not sure I would have classified the, the Golgari deck you played as cl classic rock with how many creatures were in it. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. More, more aggressive than that. Yeah. Um, but that style of deck, you know, so it, to me, that's very similar to what the teamer decks look like right now. You know, mm. they're kind of mid-rangey. They're not going way over the top with ultimatums or anything like they did last season. Yeah. You know, maybe they play all runs epiphany, but most of us don't at this point. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly. I feel like it's just not super hyper aggressive and it's not really controlling. Yeah. So you're in that middle ground where mid-range mid -range decks right now that don't play Great Henge and don't have Adventure Package get outclassed really quickly. Yeah. So that's the vein that I was thinking that, that that's, it's struggling in that aspect. And, and that's not that those kinds of decks aren't viable. It's yeah. that there is a single kind of that deck that is so good yeah. that you that's the benchmark. Now. Exactly. And yeah. It's a very high benchmark, and it's yeah. Adventure Package and Great Henge. So I agree. I don't think that deck cleared that benchmark. I don't either. But, you know, there were some things that I liked. Um, the Sagemore 3-2 continues to be pretty cool to me. Uh, it's another card that's kind of uh, tough to build because, you know, you, you want to play enough creatures to make that ability work. But I want to pair that with, like, Village Rites. And I, yeah. I mean, I guess I kind of did on on Tuesday's show that Jun deck. I like that Jun deck a lot moving forward. I, I have some faith in that um, actually being a competitor. Yeah, I yeah. agree. That that deck's in cool. I think that deck could use some uh, Awaken the Blood avatars in it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, honestly, that card looked awesome from your from your deck on Tuesday, and I think it, it would slot nicely with all those ten to the pest. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. Shall we? Yeah. Now that we're done talking about other decks. Yeah. <laughs> How about let's play our decks? All right. It's a novel idea, but I guess. <laughs> all right. Got a mulligan this one. Uh, just two lands that don't produce. Uh, you know, black for this. Pretty clunky with Kiora. Pretty yeah. bunch of no-brainer. I'll keep my seven. All right. Got a nice solid curve here. Lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. I want to draw a fourth land, so this Fable Passage will enter untapped. But... <laughs> you you know that's a turn three Fable Passage. Uh, honestly, that wouldn't even be bad. I've got two two drops. Yep, yep, that's fair. All right. I think I'm most excited by the fact that I have a snarl and a plane, so it's going to enter. Okay, out. okay. Yeah. That's what we call a lucky snarl. No, that's what we call splinter twin, as the kids call it. Are we going to start calling the ones from Shadows over in Estrada also snarls? Because these are snarls? Snarl, uh, snarl. That's a is good that gonna, question. Is that going to happen? All right. Uh, How about I'm... just the unplayed lands? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep, but it is pretty risky, but I don't really want to go to... Uh, to five here. So. I think I'm just going to keep calling all of them freaking Port Town. <laughs> okay. Fast to you. Okay. I'll play my Snarl. I'll show you the planes. Okay. And I have an I'll see it. Okay. Fast turn. I will draw. <laughs> that was the worst possible draw. I'll play a Swamp and I'll pass to you. I'll uh, attack for one. Okay. 19. I'll go to 21. Let's play this planes. And I have a Season Hollow Blade. All right. Pass the turn. This is what you came for during previous season. Yeah. <laughs> I'll play this, Scry. Um, I don't think I can have that, and I'll pass to you. Ooh. And drew a lane. Oh. How lucky. Okay, I will declare tax. Yep. Send in the clowns. I will take it. Take four, go to uh, 15. 15. You go to 22. go to 22. I will then play a Silver Quill Silencer. Okay. I am going to name... Uh, I'm definitely going to name one of the sweepers here because I have LC to protect it from a spot removal spell. The question okay. is which one. 
Uh, I haven't seen Corey's exact list. Normally, they play more Shadows Verdicts and Extinction Events, but obviously, Extinction Event being able to be cast next turn makes it a little bit more threatening. And Corey hasn't really done anything. I think it's pretty clear that he does have a Heartless Act, though. He just hasn't had a good chance to, get to play it. Wouldn't be surprised if that gets cast on the Alcid on end step. Um, so I... I think I'm going to name Shadows Verdict still, and hopefully okay. I don't get burned. Uh, you got to use the spot roll spell. You got it. That's not a good sign. No, it's, you're, you're doing all right. Um, so I just have a tap land and then just an Elspeth Nightmare. Uh, yep. And I'll pass to you. All I wanted to do was not draw a spell, <laughs> and I did. Good, good. So the Elspeth's Nightmare is going to get value. Yay! The question is how. Um, if Corey had Extinction Event, he would have cast it. I played a tap lamp. Oh, you played tap? Yeah, you played tap. <laughs> okay. So I guess I have the question of whether or not I want to run a one drop into a Shadow's Verdict or potentially get pretty beat up by a uh... extinction event. Yeah. You're at 15 right now. 15. Uh, we can crack the Fable Passage. Okay. And then I'll start thinking. Okay. Um... Yeah, I think I am going to. Yeah, I'm going to play Maul. Okay. Equip to the Hallow Blade, attack for eight. Okay. Put you to seven. Seven. And I will pass the turn. All right. I will draw a card. Three silver quill command that turn. Okay. I'll be taking that. All right. Well, I'm in a lot of trouble. Doesn't have the sweeper. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Um. So, you know, even casting a Shadow's Verdict here, then uh, you lose three life, go to four. I'll draw another card. Wouldn't even be the worst for me. That would be in the sweeper category that I wish I had. Yeah. But I'm saying it wouldn't even be, like, you know, it wouldn't be devastating. Yeah, that's like true. That, that's like true. that card normally is in this matchup. Yeah, that is very true. Um, well, I kind of think I have one choice here. And it's not good. Um, I don't even know if this actually saves me. Yeah, so I need to do this. Um, it has to be. Yep. Yeah. All right, pass to you. Pretty easy to hit the silencer there. Yeah, we just stumbled on mana too early where you just were able to get under me, and it's going to be a tough one here. Okay, well, I will attack for five. I'm down to two. And... Do I want to play a giant killer into... Uh, extinction event. You clearly don't have an extinction event, or you would have cast that last turn for sure. Yep, um, that one's true. You mm -hmm. could have Shadows Verdict, but you would need to draw a land, an untapped land to cast it. That is not a double-faced card, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but And if you, if I don't play another creature, a spot removal spell can keep, keep you alive. I think I can afford to run a Giant Killer okay. into a super, so I'll play it. And pass the turn. All right. I will uh, draw, and I will show you this unplayable hand. <laughs> and okay. then I'll concede. That's a lot of uncastable. Yeah, I don't even think I had a an out if you played that. If you didn't, yeah. of course, I could just draw spot removal. But, yeah, just uh, had to keep a two-lander, and then every third land I drew was just a tap land, so that ended up being uh, slightly awkward. Okay. All right. Well, nice... Uh... 
Nice look from Silver Gill Silence or Silver yeah, Quill Silence. Today. That card's nice. Just the fact that it's three power too. You know, it's already a great two drop. You know, if you ever get value off of it, it's awesome. Uh, you know, some decks it's very clear what they're going to be doing. You know, if, if if I'm cultivating or something like that. And if uh, that card in like one of the SCG Tour Online events where you get open deck lists is going to be even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I think think the first thing you said it being three power so important it is you, you know, got you, you, two mana two twos are just okay yeah. you know like, apply so much more pressure attacks into yeah. bone crusher giant yep yep uh, you know still get stomped you know that is the thing but you know everything gets stomped everything dies to stomp everything does <laughs> all right rob you got a question for us by any chance i don't at the moment all right empty q for you <laughs> All right. Well, I'll be going first this time. And hopefully with a hand of similar quality. Yeah, well, yeah, my, my, both my hands were awful, so. All right. Have you thought about just drawing better? I have, and I did this game. Thank you for that uh, encouragement, because this hand is much better. I'll keep. I will also keep. All right, I got to try them, and I'll pass to you. I have a Snarl, Reveal of Planes, and okay. I will play a Salt of Savior. All right, good boy. All right, I got a temple. I do not want that seven drop, and I'll pass to you. Okay, let's play this plane. It's good in for one. Okay. I'm going to play Silver Quill Silencer, and I'm going to name Cultivate. Okay. Starting on two tap lands means he probably wants to cultivate on turn three. Makes sense. I told you I cut those for Eureka moments at the beginning of the show, but that's all right. <laughs> I'll pass to you. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. You win some, you lose some. Yeah, exactly. Attack for four. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. Brings you to 15. Yep. Okay, I'll play a planes. Play right in. Okay. Pass the turn. Um. <laughs> oh, I hate Ryan <laughs> so much. I will heartless oh, act. Indestructible. Okay. Okay, okay. Everything's fine. Life is good. I'll sack this. How's that ramp spell swap treating you? <laughs> <laughs> it's real bad, this game. This game, it has not treated me right, except the fact that you would have gotten a trigger if it was Cultivate. <laughs> I think I think you would take the extra lands. I think I would. Okay, we're not dead, though. But yeah, that is a great card here. So we'll put away in this, and then I'll buy Yori and, and pass to you. Okay. Yeah, that was disgusting. So you can potentially get up to two, four, five, six mana next turn. So still yep. not verdict range. Yep. Attack for five. I will take it down to fifteen or down to ten. Ten, yeah. Um. You have five in hand? Five in hand. All busted. Eh, I'll play Hollow Blade. Okay. That's the turn. All right. All right. That was an awful draw, but we'll play this and pray. I got a Gargaroth. Pass yeah. to you. No land. No land. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> you leave that Gargaroth alone, okay? I will not be doing that. No! <laughs> <laughs> Act, why don't I chop that one down? Uh, attack you for eight. All right, Here's down to two. two. Play giant killer. Yeah, that's the turn. Uh, so yeah, I have the extinction event, but it's just not good enough. Yeah, I got two evens and two odds. Yeah, and I would have extinction event last turn if I drew a land, but yeah, these Eureka moments have looked awful in the face of Radon so far, but. Yeah, yikes. But I do think they would be good in like, you know, even even Sultai Control, if I were to play those where you just hold up mana um, to counter something, if they do nothing, then you Eureka Moment. Maybe it's just supposed to be in that kind of shell, and maybe they're still good in this shell, but so far they have not looked good. Yeah, it's, it's awkward because yeah. Cultivate occupied such a specific part on the curve. Yeah. And lets you, you know, Shadow's Verdict on turn four. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, all your interaction costs two, so you just get interact yeah. into a really powerful ramp And spell. I did, I did um, you know, 
think of that, and I adjusted the curve a little bit, played more Elspeth Nightmares, more three drops and stuff, uh, you know, to, to yeah, help that with makes that. makes a lot of sense. But, uh, yeah, still, has not looked good. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't looked great. I think uh, I think Eureka Moment is a card that really wants to be paired with two uh, a lot of two mana ramp. I guess you do have Wolf Full of Haven. Yeah, Wolf Full of Haven. Yep. Uh, but maybe you want some emergency sequences too, and just go full on ramp at that point. Yeah. Or um, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Um, or I I started playing Sultai Control um towards the end like last week or whatever and and the deck actually seemed awesome it was just getting rid of emergent ultimatums uh just playing shark typhoons gargaroths um and just more controlling elements more counter spells yeah. still still the normal soul tide stuff i think it would be really good in that shell and it's still questionable if it's even playable in this shell but all right we're gonna head to the sideboard here i'm getting beat up badly but we're gonna see if i got some uh extra removal for this pesky creatures don't go anywhere all right, everybody, welcome back to sideboarding here between Sultai Ramp and Orzov Agro. From my end, just some huge changes going on here. We're taking out one Omen for Shadow's Verdict. I probably would be taking out Eureka Moments, uh, you know, in an aggressive matchup, you know, maybe. But uh, we, we want to try those out, so we're going to leave them in for now. And the, those are going to get a little bit better here after yeah. sideboarding because I'm bringing in some discard spells. And little yep. card advantage always nice against discard. This is our main sideboard card for ramp and control matchups, a card I like quite a bit, mm -hmm. Humiliate. Uh, obviously, you know, really wants to be played in a deck with a lot of one drops. Mm -hmm. So the gas one drop, humiliate on turn two. Yeah, that's awesome. And really increase the clock. So this deck is, you know, tailor made for the card. Uh, and we'll see how it does. Also got the standard, you know, our kind of Amiria's turning on some of the protection creatures and Luminarch Aspirin, I think is our worst two drop in the matchup. Uh, so it's the one that comes out to fit Humiliate into the curve. Looks awesome. Yeah, I, I'm pretty excited for Humiliate. I was just always wondering if we were going to find a shell for it, you know, and uh, it's, it, it's a tricky one. You know, I remember the days of Castigate being in standard and that was a staple. Granted, it was, you know, 16 years ago at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. All right, Rob, you got a question at all while we shuffle up for a third game? I do. As Thais wants to know, do you think the ultimatum decks could play the new rampant growth, or does the land dying to your sleepers not make it worth it? It definitely could, and maybe that's just a better thing to be doing, but I do think the one thing that's good about the ultimatum decks is it makes removal bad. You know, like Heartless Axe against a Yorian deck has been historically awful. Um, and now if that removal is actually getting turned on, and the stomps are getting turned on that are normally turned off, I think that's too much of a liability. Um, also you bad know, with your own Shadows Verdict. Yeah, bad with your own Rass as well. So, yeah, more than likely not. It's probably just going to still be Wolf Willow Haven and Cultivate are going to be the better ones. But I, I definitely think in the Soul Tie Control version that Eureka Moment could be, it could be a lot better. It really could be. So, yeah, if, if you're going to play it in a deck with more cheap interaction, I think yeah. that's, that's where you're going to make out uh, well. And you're not even playing Eureka Moment on turn four. I think at that point, it's more of a turn five play, so then you can have a two-mana spell up with it. Yep. Like Sustainable Stroke, Negate, Heartless Act, any of those. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're on the play. I think I'm going to keep and probably get run over. And, oh, man, I saw... Within the first four cards, I saw you know dual land, one drop, and humiliate, but then there wasn't a second land. Oh, no. Those are always the biggest tilt. You draw your first three cards, and it's just like land, bitter blossom, uh, yeah, you know, these. ancestral <laughs> visions, and then just no other lands. Like, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not accepting this as a hand. What did I do to you, deck? Yeah. What, what did yeah. I do to deserve this? Exactly. Exactly. Was I, was I bad in a past life? <laughs> Ross, you're bad in a current life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that shouldn't affect me until the next life. Of course. Yeah, you shouldn't have to own up for your responsibilities until the life after. I agree. Yeah. That's That makes sense. I'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll let next Ross deal with that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I say a lot, too. Like, I'll, I'll like, you know, me and my fiance, Toro, will be cleaning around the house, and we're like, you know what? Let's let future Corey and Tori deal with this mess. Let's go get tacos or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tacos sounds great. Yeah, and I'll be like, ah, oh, and then we get, you know, to where it's time for future Corey and Tori to do work and we're like, God, past Corey and Tori really suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what jerks. Those two are jerks, yeah. Um, okay, here uh, I've got a pretty solid hand. I could I think I've got to just put a land back and hope to draw another one. Your go. Uh, I will play a Plains and a Selfless Savior. I know what I want to draw. That was not it. 
All right, I just have a, excuse me, wrong land, a Murkwater Pathway, and I'll pass to you. So, attack for one. I'll take it, 19. I will play a Grim Climb Pathway and a Season Hallowblade. Okay. Pass the turn. Okay, um, right on time, of course. I'm going to play Omen of the Sea. Sure. And I think I do want this top card. And that's going to be a temple. temple yeah. <laughs> do not the, want Valky, and I'll pass to you. The turn three main phase omen is almost always a s signal for a temple. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The temple of tea. Uh, talk about teas. You got a temple of tea, too? Back Good to hear. Four. All right, I'll take it. 15. Got a three land hand on the draw. Mm -hmm. Put one back. Haven't Good. drawn another one. Good. Um, so I guess I will play an Alcid. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. We're finally going to play our first spell that matters at all. So, all right. I got the Cadillac. We're going to get some kitties and I'll pass to you. Yeah. Meow. Uh. <laughs> Uh, rebel, 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 rebel. Ross, rant, 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 rant. Uh, <laughs> Ross just has to try to extend this as long as he can, so you don't have a chance to, you know, play a best of five. That is Ross's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's his best play here. Definitely not what I'm trying to do right now. I thought you were just having a flashback to last night for the Jazz game. Oh, crap, now he is. <laughs> uh. You got the goods? Nope. Okay. Okay. Not at all. How do I win this game? I like that. Very unclear. Yeah, I'm actually going to cast spells and stuff, so that's pretty good. Yeah, what a what a jerk. <laughs> Can't believe you would do something like that. I know. I know. I'm inconsiderate. Uh, I will play a giant killer. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. Um... I'm going to play a land, and this seems like a time to actually play our Eureka moment. I'll draw two. Okay, and you may put a land card uh, from your hand under the battlefield, so this is the same kind of thing as Gross Spiral, where you can't use mobile double face cards to put into play, so I will put this into play. You can, play. but you need to choose the front side. A, unless it's a spell on the front side, yeah, yeah. is what I'm saying, yeah. Okay, so let's go with... Got a little Seagate Reborn, or Seagate. Something like that. What is the name of the land? It's Seagate something. Seagate Restoration and Seagate something like that, I believe is the technical term. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then I also have... Oh, one with nothing. <laughs> a... Ooh, actually, yeah, no, I think I'm still going to do this. Um, then I'll put a Wolf of Haven here, and I'll pass to you. Silver Quill Silencer. Okay. I will name Emergent Ultimatum. Okay. Pass the turn. <laughs> so now when Corey casts his Emergent Ultimatum, he's still going to win the game. But I'll draw a card and he'll lose three life. <laughs> I'm not letting you draw any cards. Forget that. All right. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to crew. And then I got a Shadows Verdict, which is probably pretty good. Yeah, that'll do, pig. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Too bad I can't put a, uh, um, a counter on this, but then I'll attack for four. I get a 16. And I'll pass to you. You got three in hand? Three in hand. Oh, I drew a land. Okay. And I have an Archon of Emiria. Okay. Hopefully you don't have a removal. Can you pay for. one for that? Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you pay one for that? Why would my deck give me hope like that? Drawing <laughs> land and making me think I could possibly win. <laughs> There we go. There we go. We did our things. 
Kept an opener of four lands on the play with two four drops and a Shadows Verdict. I'm like, yeah, probably should send this back, but let's just hope your draw isn't insane. And it wasn't. Yeah. My opener, yeah. my, my second hand was three lands, two one drops, two three drops. I like that you did say at the beginning of that game, like, I'm going to put this land on the bottom. I'll draw another one. Four turns <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah. I thought both my three drops were important. Elite, yeah. elite Spellbinder and Archon of Emeria. Okay, okay. My, my one drops were Giant Killer and one of the protection creatures, I think Selfless Savior. Yeah. And so, I mean, yeah, I've got like a removal spell for Eorian or Gargaroth or something. Yeah. And I just need you know, a third land. I'm a 24 land deck. So, unfortunately, I know it's a new card. I want to try it out, but it is not going to be a target in this matchup. So I'm going to do the responsible thing and put an omen in, uh, into my deck for this last or for this next one. But 21 lands left in 53 cards. I think I went down, I think I, I made it a 23 lane deck without the 23. Yeah. Okay, okay. If I remember correctly. Yeah, you don't really, you aren't able to abuse any double faced uh, cards too well in that deck, are you? Um, like, yeah, like I could block. I, I can't really play Agadim's Awakening. Like, I, I yeah. don't want many swamps in my deck to like begin with. Like Predation, maybe. It's could, really could slow. Could be a takedown you could try to play. Yeah. Doesn't seem great. Yeah, but it's a tap land. I, yeah. I, I, I could probably get away with playing like two Emirias or. You know, and occasionally cast them. Amiri's call. Yeah, Amiri's yeah. call. Yeah, that's true. But you'd, you, to make it effective, you'd have to cut spells. And, it, uh, you know, it, unclear that you want to do that. Then you just yeah. play planes, and, maybe. And you it, know? it also, uh, oh, that, that's the other thing, is is all those double face cards make your snarls worse. Yeah, and they're already so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're well, already so poor. So I'm a 23 lane deck. All right, I got to keep. Yeah. I got to keep right here. <laughs> 20 lands out of 53 cards, and I've got three draws. I'm just probably about 75% or so to hit. Yeah. Looks like you hit the 25%er there, bud. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got a sneaker. Not not insane or anything, but I can cast spells before turn four, so that's pretty good. Wow. Um, pretty incredible that I have a four lane hand where my snarl doesn't enter on tap. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a hand where you really need it to? Yes, like that. Um. Uh. I mean, you can play two drop on time. And a four drop. If you got two twos, you know, that hand's not so bad. I have, you know, I've got some okay cards, I guess. They're not great. Yeah. Okay. Um, honestly, if, if keeping a four lane hand without any of my good three drops to actually have real disruption, like I have a silencer on turn two, I'm probably going to name Heartless Act, mm. you know, and then, you know, play some cheap creatures. I just don't think this hand is going to pressure you well enough. Okay. I'm going to mulligan it. Oh, strong Archon of Emeria. Oh, best possible. Yeah, into another Snarl, worst yeah. possible. <laughs> yeah, I would have uh, snapped that hand off personally, but you know me. <laughs> Still the same old core. G Giant Killer, Alcyid, uh, Silencer, four lands. Yeah. Where two of the lands are going to enter tapped. Yeah, I would have kept. But y'all and me, still the same old Corey B, uh, you know. I'm going to play a two drop on turn two. I'm going to play two one drops on turn three, and then go from there. Yeah. Not great, admittedly, but... But you get to draw a card every turn to help your hand. Yeah. Every single turn, you just get a new card. Well, you know? that's true even if you mulligan, so. I know. That's why you might as well start with seven. <laughs> All right, Rob, you got a question for us to stop this nonsense that's coming out of my mouth? <laughs> uh, okay. First of all, that, that was an R that was not appropriate. This is not a collective effort. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did say mine. I said uh, coming out of my mouth. Oh, okay. I thought you said R, Matt. No, no, Yeah, no, no. no he did specify I, I himself. I up to it. Don't, you know, don't throw me under the bus there. Oh, I threw you straight on. Okay, okay. I wound up and threw you under, even but, though both of my arms are currently sore. Well, uh, who's going to Keanu Reeves and save me from that? If I'm Sandra Bullock being thrown under the bus. She gets thrown under the bus. Wasn't she driving the bus? Yeah, I think she started by driving the bus. I just remember the end scene where Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock escape from underneath the bus. It was a loose speed I, ha reference. I haven't seen Speed in so long. Oh, so man. That was like I my favorite remember. movie as a kid. I've seen Speed 2, but not Speed. Oh, honey, honey. Ross, that's going on the list. No. <laughs> yeah, you can't watch Speed 2. Have you watched Speed 4 where they're on an elevator that can't go any faster? <laughs> no, wait, wait. we got to watch Point Break, then Speed. Okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh.
Why, Death? Yeah, why? Speed was one series that went from like amazing and then just right away. So the fell. opposite of the Fast and Furious series. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it got so bad so quickly. All right, bring it up. Estea says, "Wow, spoiler much." <laughs> I was just going to watch Speed when I got home from work today. Great. <laughs> That's good. Hestaeus has been crushing it today. We need to VIP Hestaeus here in this in this chat. I should do that. Yeah, you should. Hestaeus has been here enough. Hestaeus, you're a VIP in our hearts, at least. Even if Rob is so cold that he wouldn't press the button for you, but, you know. <sighs> Next okay. question is, how do I make someone a VIP? <laughs> Dash, VIP, and then their name. We need to hit here. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 no. That was awesome. Okay. Good for you. Kept the classic snarl fable passage hand. Yes. <laughs> Drew the planes. Yeah. Now we get to actually have a curve. Now you get to play some magic. Okay. Um. think I'm going to go with a Velky. Let's see what you got. Okay. Ooh, uh, so you have a great hand still. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is the Spellbinder will be uh, leaving me. Spellbinder is quite good. Um, but it's not the biggest of deals. I think I'm actually going to take the Selfless Savior. It's just so annoying whenever you play one of your three drops and can protect it from all my removal. So, yeah, I'll pass to you. Huh. I've got some options here. Options? The big question is, if I play Spellbinder, am I attacking with Hallowblade? I like the cards in my hand. The Valky is a little bit weird. It's going to make Cory Sweepers worse, but I imagine he's going to just chump with it early to save some damage. I think that's just sort of a two-mana... Gain a Save some face. Kind of, kind of card. Um, it's probably indicative of a lack of two mana interaction. I think it, holding that up here makes a lot of sense in the face of, of all the three mana creatures I can play. Um, and if you don't have good two mana interaction, could just start mauling you. I, I'm going to play the Spellbinder. This is worth three damage. Maul is worth two. So I, I got some interaction, but I got enough of it that I didn't care if you took it. That was my thought process anyways. Okay, then. Um, interesting hand. Mm -hmm. Could make one of your removal spells more expensive. Could make ultimatum cost nine. <laughs> Um, I could, I could, I could get real weird and like take the omen and hope you break on lands. <laughs> yep. But then you're gonna have two two mana removal spells to buy a lot of time. Yep. I can take one of the heartless acts to make it difficult for you to interact with me because you're. It's gonna be a while before you really get the ultimatum. You gotta mm. hit lands. Yeah. I. I. Another time where I think I wish this was Cultivate? <laughs> yeah. I would 100% I would take Cultivate if, if yeah. someone was Cultivate. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still thinking about taking the moment here, but mm -hmm. I think I would. Ra I think it just keeps you more off curve by taking one of the Heartless Acts, so that's what I'm going to do. Heartless Act? Okay. It goes like here or whatever. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, pass the turn. Okay. Um... I'll play a land and pass to you. Draw. Yep. And we're still 2020, right? Yep. Okay. It's 2021, Corey. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's still March okay. of 2020. I'll send in the clowns. 
Okay. Um. Yeah, I will block. Yeah, I'll discard. Okay. I could Heartless Act it again if I'm feeling real froggy. Um, but that seems a little silly. I'll just Heartless Act this. And this dies. I get Sulfa Savior back. Yep. And... Play right in. Pass turn. Okay. Pretty happy about that. Since Elspeth's Nightmare was a card I drew, then I'll play a Temple. And I do not yeah, want. That was best the... possible. The Temple plus Nightmare. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, uh, sorry, I'm thinking on this one. This one's tough. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Left it on top, eh? Yep. Still 20? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Okay, let's maul up the Howl Blade and uh -huh. attack for five. Okay, 15. And then I will pass the turn. Chapter Show two. Land. Okay. Um, this feels like a Eureka moment turn. It does so. seem like it. I will pass to you. Uh, play Sulfa Savior. Okay. Declare tax. Sure. Attack for five. I'll take it. Out of ten. Ten. And I'll pass the turn. Yeah, I will play Eureka Moment. A draw two. I will put this land into play. A little interesting. Of course, it main phase the moment it could have gotten an extra land onto the battlefield. Bang. And potentially er emergent ultimatum to this turn. That is true. If I top deck two land. Gave himself some options. Admittedly, I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> I got a land. Um... Yeah, this has gone pretty poorly. Corey's. Uh, just the turn where you, you hit land, the fourth land and the perfect removal spell for Raidan was... Yeah, that was pretty good. Oh, Extinction Event. Resolve. Even. Pass to you. And then draw a Sweeper even if I had drawn well. Yeah. This is... Uh... Let's equip and attack. Kill it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Kill it! Yeah, Corey Drew... Not bad. Hey, to be fair, that was a card I topped. <laughs> <laughs> that justifies it, right? That's the turn. Now, if I draw land seven, then you can be like, God, ah, Corey, rebel, 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 rebel. I mean, honestly, like, I'm kind of happy that you killed it. I think yeah. I would have been. You think Omen into that was better? Yeah, I think it yeah. just gives me a chance of drawing like a, a removal or a discard spell. I will play this yeah, and emerge an ultimatum. Hey, it was the worst land though. You can get a seven. All right, let's go with. Uh, all runs Epiphany. I'm just dead. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, I just I drew, you know, three or four lands and a one-one. All right. Luckily, we can uh, play a nice game five to see if I can stay alive to play the marbles, or if you just take me down right away. But yeah, I had some uh, had some nice draws. My hand was just great from the beginning. I my opening hand, uh, the first four cards I looked at was like two lands, Heartless Act, Omen. I'm like, okay, well, this hand's great. <laughs> Yeah, well, once I saw your hand, it just made me wish I had mauled on three and just started attacking I was hoping you wouldn't maul on three. That, yeah. That's why I didn't take Spellbinder. I was trying to incentivize you to play it because I did not care. Your three mana card, um, you know, was just going to get eaten up by Heartless Act. One, it was going to be a little bit more expensive for whatever card you took, but I think that was worth it if you played that. But still, you know, I, I had a lot of spot removal, so I think I would have been fine. But uh, Hollow Blade into Maul is just terrifying. Yeah. It's just terrifying. It's also interesting that you just didn't even need the Heartless Act that I took, so maybe that yeah. was a mistake if I take in, you know, Eureka Moment. Yeah, but then that turn I get to just, like, you know, Omen plus Eliminate, uh, and <laughs> it's, it's kind of the same, but the Eureka Moment was sweet there. It was, I wouldn't say 
I mean, it was better than Cultivate in the sense that I still got my land, I got to draw some extra cards, and, you know, I drew Extinction Event off of it. But Cultivate on three would have been nice, too. So it, it's tough. I, it's tough to value um, if that card's better or not. And I know it's going to be better that in any control matchup, right? Any matchup that isn't hyper-aggressive, it's going to be better than Cultivate because I can, like, hold up counter spells. And then it, everyone's, you know, they're just going to think, I got Shark Typhoon or whatever. But End Step Eureka Moment is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, definitely a nice card to hold up and, and put your opponent in the squeeze. Yep. Okay, this is a much better hand than I've had the last couple of games. Okay, well, I'm scared. I'll, I'll keep, though. Yeah, I'll lead on a giant killer. Okay. That's turn. <laughs> Unbeatable. That's a one drop. I got a temple. Um, don't it's think... no heart's desire, but. Yeah, I don't think I need this. Okay, I've got a Hollow Blade and attack for one. Okay. You're at 19, pass yep. the turn. I hate Hollow Blade so very much. Um. Yeah, I just have a land and pass. Um. Attack for four. Okay, I'll take it. Go to 15. Yep. Got the Drawery Disruption because I'm playing a three drop. Oh, good thing I got a Drawery Disruption then. <laughs> You're up. All right. Um, I got a Temple. It's an interesting one. I don't know if I have a ton of time for that. Really close. How many cards you got? Three. Okay. I guess I screwed this up. Um, yeah, I'll keep it. And then I got a Velky again. <laughs> I'll show you two lands and a Silver Coal Command. Dang it. Okay, pass to you. Um... All right, what modes you selecting? I will. Hmm. Interesting. Do I want to spend time having you spend a mode having you sack the Valky? What are you? Yeah, what are you at right now? Fifteen. Fifteen. That did not mark that down. That's what I thought. So I could. Uh, I got a couple options here. Several options. I can four of them, in fact. I can get really <laughs> aggressive and just pump a creature, have you sack Valky. Yep. Attack you for seven. That'll put you to eight. That's mm -hmm. importantly a two turn clock with what I have on the battlefield. I can, uh, have I can pump a creature, probably giant killer. Oh, well, I could pump giant killer, have myself draw a card, okay. try to get some more gas, maybe some disruption. Attack with both creatures. You know, Valky trades with the land if you block the Hallow Blade. Yep. I can also just pump Hallow Blade, draw a card, get in for six to uh, you know push a good amount of damage, mm -hmm. almost max, and then have the Giant Killer to just you know check the Valky for a while. I've got plenty of mana. Okay. Uh, and not a lot of gas. I, I think I, I definitely want to draw a card. Yep. And then I, I can also just draw a card, have you sack this, and get in for four. Yep. And not have to deal with the Valky. I wouldn't be surprised if you have like Zika's Chariot, uh, at which point the the giant killer is kind of nice for you know just checking the chariot. Yep. Um, I think I just don't think I'm gonna like you haven't really stumbled. You've got plenty of gas. I think I'm gonna need some gas. I'm gonna have you sack and draw. Okay. So I'll go to 19. Just make the value play. Okay. And then I'm gonna go to 11 with this yep. attack. Attack you to 11, and then okay. I'll pass the turn. I will draw. I got to land, and I'll pass to you. Oh, this is a eureka moment. <laughs> Aha! Uh, play, I'll see it of life's bounty. I'll respond with a heartless act. Um... Yeah, I'll discard. Okay. This gets tapped. And attack for one. Down to ten. Pass the turn. All right. Uh, end step, I got an omen. 
Okay, so just interaction plus omen. That also makes sense. Don't want those. Love that. <laughs> Obviously, definitely afraid of a shadow's verdict here. Yep. Okay. Um. All right. Now I got a binding. Um. I'll just hit. I'll see it. Makes sense. Let's take away my options. I got a scry. Don't want that. And I'll pass to you. That was a good draw. Uh oh. Attack you for four. I'm down to six. Right Dan. Oh. It's a good magic card. Stops the sweepers, gets me up to six power. <laughs> Pass a turn. Draw Can't chapter two. We already lost Velky, so we'll just get a Zagoth. Okay. Um... Got four in hand? Yep. All right. So I have a Heartless Act for Radon. And then a Binding. And now do I want you to discard a card or kill this? I think I want to do this because Maul would kill me. At least I get to play around that, but I do still just die to another command. Uh, but then I'll pass to you. Do you got it? Back for three. And I'll take it. Three. Go to three. I'll play a Fable Passage and pass the turn. All right. I will draw. Two, three, Death, death touch. touch. Get another land. Yep. Do we have the ultimatum. I do not. But I do have the land As to play Yorian. Land, play Yorian, Blink. with your stuff. Target that. So is the fact that I have this land to discard and this chop down for Euro Yorian good? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Yeah, have the, have the Orion covered. Uh, just really need to dodge ultimatum. Nice yeah. close one to end that match. That was good. a close one. Yeah, well played. Well yeah. played. The, uh, ended up being the, you know, the command looked pretty cool. That was the first time I got to cast that. Yeah, and that was even a mode where I feel like it just wasn't, it wasn't great there. Yeah. But there's some moments that, like, you know, I had to fear for that card just killing me right at the end. So yeah, I think yeah. the, I think the jump mode, especially against Azika's Chariot, is nice. Mm. Uh, help you get damage through. Um, you know, there's just a lot. There's a lot of good modes. You know, yeah. returning Luminarch Aspirate when they stomp it. Yeah, the uh, returning two drop. I think that's the best one in your yeah. deck, to be honest. Although like, it's probably the worst one in this matchup because so much of your removal exiles. Yeah, but I mean, I still, you know, yeah. I, I do still kill your creatures a decent amount with eliminates and stuff, and well, and it's so great with selfless savior and stuff. So it, it's just awkward against Shadow's Verdict in particular yeah. because yeah. either I'm Shadow's casting Verdict's it before bad. you Verdict, right? Yeah, and then you just get, get sweet whatever every turn gets swept away. Yeah, or after Verdict when I don't have anything in the graveyard. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that does make it a little bit more awkward. But against an adventure deck, you know, against Stomp and stuff, it seems excellent. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we didn't even get to see that card at its best. Uh, didn't draw Humiliate, but I do think this card is quite good. Yeah, I think uh, that card's a perfect home in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and obviously perfect. And Silver Cool Silencer looked fine. Like, none of the yep. cards looked, you know, overpowering awesome, but they all did their job. They all look yeah. solid. I didn't, you know, super miss Faceless Haven, but, you know, yeah. that's the creature lands are hard. It's a hard card to miss because you never, like, you know, you never remember the times where, in, uh, you know, where it's just insane, where you yeah. just pull ahead because of it. Yeah. And it, like, it, it, a lot of times it restricts what your opponent can do because yeah. they have to be really worried about it. Maybe they have, they think like, okay, I've got to save a heartless act. So I can't use that on these early creatures. Yeah. And I've got to find the sweeper and you, and you just run them over and you think, yeah. oh, they just didn't have removal or kept a hand of that interaction and missed. Yeah. But in reality, like they realize that like, I've got to, you know, save it for something else. So. Yeah, definitely a big cost in, mm. uh, you know, splashing black and cutting the creature land, but there's a lot of gains now. You yeah. Know, three three new cards, and you get some better removal in your sideboard. Great you know, removal, yeah. These decks have had to rely on Glass Casket. Now you get to play things like Heartless Act and Vanishing Verse. And Vanishing other, Verse another is card. insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that card's awesome. That Exiles too, right? Yeah. Exile oh. target monocolored permanent. Isn't it an instant? I forget. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Doing that to Annex, to Torbrin, you know, like some of these excellent monocolored creatures. Yeah. You know, Even like a Maul of the Sky plays in the mirror. Yeah. You know, any any of that stuff. Hits. Yeah, I like that deck a lot. And from from my side, you know, uh 
it's pretty standard soul to ultimatum eureka moments looked really bad against aggro so if it's like a lot of aggro i think that's pretty rough but i the one thing i did learn from it and it was kind of a eureka moment uh it was just that Whenever I played the Soltai control list, that's where I was craving a card like Eureka's Moment because I'm always holding up stuff. You know, here while you're playing Elspeth's Nightmare, you're playing, you know, we'd still be playing Binding, but, you know, you're playing all this stuff on your first three turns that's on your turn to deal with creatures and stuff. I think it's worse there. So, like, I think that last turn, if I, if you didn't, like, progress too much to the battlefield and for four mana I get to choose between, you know, Double Heartless Act or just Eureka's Moment, I think that would have been awesome. Um, you know, in the, in the Soul Tide Control Shell. Yeah, I think you, if you want to play Eureka Moment, you either need to be a hard ramp deck. Yeah. And where you're, you've got multiple two mana ramp cards and you're not at that rampy. Yeah. Uh, or you need to be a deck that is taking advantage of it being an instant. Yeah. You know, you're playing Didn't Say Please and different counter spells, yeah. and you get to hold up and put your opponent in that awkward squeeze. I also think it's a card that plays pretty well with All Runs Epiphany. I can imagine yeah. going, you know, turn two, foretell, interact in turn three, turn four. You know, maybe they try to, if they try to slow play something, you get mm. to draw a couple cards, ramp, and then cast that All Runs Epiphany on turn five. Yeah. And I keep thinking about these teamer decks with uh, Rowan and Will. Um, you know, even even Rowan into a three mana Eureka's moment into another three mana spell. You know, seems insane, right? Like because Eureka's moment costs three, you get to play another land and into another three drop. So you you essentially have seven mana worth of stuff on turn four. You know, I mean, you you could be doing some disgusting things with being able to play an extra land when your spells get reduced cost. I, I think that's an unexplored space so far that I, I, I'm going to try for next week for sure as a teamer base row and will uh, all runs epiphany kind of spell deck yeah. with like just bone crusher, not the adventure theme. Um, yeah. I think that would be pretty cool. Sort of a t teamer mid range, a little rampy, but not, yeah. super, not overly. So yeah. Earth Span dragon magma opus. Yeah. Multiple choice. Still that card yeah. would be sweet. Uh, and then some, you know, two mana interactive spells spells um that work pretty well with that cost reduction stuff as well so i, I like the idea of going you know turn two um emergent the the rampant growth emergent whatever yep yep turn three row and stomp your creature oh yeah oh yeah or just that plus negate you know i mean depending on the metagame or the matchup the fact that you can make those swaps and make them flexible seems awesome you know um so, yeah, I, I'm really interested in that. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for our second round. Ross, you got the marbles, you you jerk. You, this this show will be yours. But I, I have my best my best deck for last. We're going to be playing an Is It Flash list. Doesn't have Rowan and Will. This is definitely more. Uh, and Is It Flash Snow. This is definitely um, just like LSV's deck he built for Kel Time right away. That had a huge impact. You know, that had a huge impact. It kind of fell off. Well, LSV built another really cool deck, and I wanted to try it out. So uh, it should be a really fun one. Yeah, and I'm going to be playing a Golgari food deck, so okay. taking another, you know, sort of struggling deck from last season. Uh, that deck struggled basically all season. Mono yeah. Green food. Couldn't beat Ultimatum. Uh, yeah. Couldn't beat Ultimatum. And, uh, you know, including a bit of a, of a graveyard theme in it, Black also is going to give you some discard spells to deal with, deal with the ramp decks. Okay. But there's some cool graveyard interactions there that can, uh, you know, give the deck another angle of attack. Should be fun. All right, everyone, we're going to take a short five-minute break, and we'll be right back with round number three here on Versus Live. Welcome back to Versus Live, where we are a sideboard, or not, not sideboard. <laughs> this is not the quite yet. <laughs> Welcome back to day. Versus Live, yeah. <laughs> I'm Ross Merriam. I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we've got Rob in the booth. Say, psych, Yorian sucks, Corey, Rob. Psych, Yorian sucks, Corey, Rob. Rob. <laughs> oh, we're we taking all of your questions. Robbed. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had that in my head to do that throw to him, but yeah. I still somehow thought we were sideboarding. Yeah. I think it's because yeah. we were laying out cards. Laying out cards has, uh, has, has thrown us off. Yeah. Me. Absolutely. Well, regardless, <laughs> Rob will be taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. Yes. It is our final match here on Versus Live, continuing to explore Strixhaven Standard, having a great time doing it. Yep. Uh, as is typical, I think we saved some of our sweeter decks for the end. 
end. Definitely. Uh, maybe that, that Teamer deck was was pretty sweet. I did some cool stuff with that it. That Teamer deck was cool. Absolutely. But this one also cool. I said before the break, it is a Golgari food deck. So mono green food, splashing black uh, for some new cards and that enable a sort of graveyard theme. The big ones here are Pestilent Cauldron and Witherbloom Command. Mm -hmm. You know, now with Cauldron, I can discard, um, you know, my... Uh, Feasting Troll Kings okay. and return them if I've got a bunch of food. I can also play, um, I'm playing Silver Smoke Ghoul, which goes really well with food. Yeah, we were talking about that. I like that. Yeah, so you can do some cool stuff like that I, I and, uh, you know, get your ghouls in. I'm playing Egon as another way to, uh, you know, uh, utilize the graveyard. Mm -hmm. I like that the reverse side, Restorative Burst, gains you enough life to return uh, the Silver Smoke Ghouls. Yeah. Uh, I'm playing Witherbloom Command as another mill card, a removal spell, a, you know... It just does it all. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and a way to gain life if I yeah. need to do that. It can gain two, so then the insect token's dying if you get to do that. Okay. To get you that third life point. Uh, and then one Dina. This was more of just, I think it might be better than the third Witch's Oven. Okay. We're just going to kind of try it out. Uh, it's legendary, so I didn't want to play too many of them. Uh, but you definitely want some sacrifice outlets to go with these recursive threats. Okay. We're playing a couple of Pelucranosis. We got a little escape action when we're milling our graveyard. Love it. And then the, you know, typical food engine that you see, Gilded Goose, Wicked Wolf, Trail of Crumbs. Uh, cool. And we'll see how well the black cards, uh, you know, enhance it. Awesome. So, uh, you know, I would say the king of is it tempo decks would be Luis Scott Vargas. So luckily I saw a really cool list from him uh, doing just that, playing the snow version um, that, you know, he championed right away at the beginning of Kel time and just adding some of the new cards here. So expressive iteration is a card that I didn't even, I didn't think was going to be that great. And I, I'm still not 100% sure on it, but it is a nice little uh, cantrip here for two mana. Um, you know, I, a, a pretty interesting card, and we'll see. Um, it is is maybe not even the best turn two play. Actually, it's probably better on turn three, exiling the land, playing the land, and then drawing there. That that's probably the home for it. Yeah, completely yeah. agree that it's not. You know, it's it's a you'll play it on turn two sometimes when yeah. you just need to do stuff with your mana, and you're happy to have that as an option. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely, you know, maximize in the the middle turns of the game, and even a great late game draw. Yeah, great late game draw. You can just play two big spells essentially. You know, I mean, if we have seven mana, play this. You get uh, negate. And Goldspan Dragon, play Goldspan Dragon from Exile and having a gate in hand, like something like that would be insane. So yeah. when, when you draw it late, it's two mana better than Divination. Yes, exactly. And then we got uh, Torrent Sculptor. This is probably not going to be played on the front side too much. It's really for Flamethrower Sonata, which is probably the coolest card name I've ever heard in my entire life, first of all. Um, but Flamethrower Sonata being able to discard a spell. We have very expensive spells in this deck that get cost reducted from Foretelling. Um, you get to deal damage to a creature, Planeswalker, uh, and and loot, you know, so a really valuable card, um, in my opinion. And the front can just be a big creature as well. Prismari Command got a couple of those. A nice, interesting card. Nothing I'm too excited about. This command is just okay. And then uh, we have Galazeth Prismari. This card I am excited about. We have a decent amount of uh, treasure synergies here. Prismari command helps with that. Uh, we saw me fool around with this deck, I believe, last week or the week after. Really the start of the preview season. I was playing Rowan and uh, Will. LSV chose not to do that and just lean in and have kind of a clean dragon plan. And uh, the deck looks quite good to me. Yeah, I yeah. think the dragon plan makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think uh, Frost Breath is a really critical addition. Agreed. It's, not only, it's very good with Prismari, the Elder Dragon. Yeah. It gives you a spell you can cast off of that treasure. Immediately. It's yeah. very good with the sorcery. When you cast it on turn three, you can find a one minute piece of one minute interaction. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or, you know, either find the land and then cast the, the Frost Breath from your hand. Mm -hmm. So it sort of turns on the divin divination mode as quickly as possible and yep. as reliably as possible. And then Prismari Command is a card that I agree with you. It's it doesn't read that well. Yeah. But I think it plays really well with the way the other cards in in is it are costed, because you can you know interact and then ramp into Goldspan Dragon. Yeah. You can interact and then be able to play the That's Elder true. Dragon with a piece of two mana interaction up, which yeah. is really nice. I think that just that one extra treasure token lets you get to those turns. You know the, the is it deck. It looked really, really good when it got to land a dragon, interact with its opponent, and then untap with the dragon. Yeah, you know, pretty much GG. Yeah. And I, I think the tools that have been added to that style of deck from this set are tools that lead you to those kinds of turns a lot more often. Uh, yeah, more, a lot more consistency to it. Yep, yeah. I agree. I agree. And, you know, even just the four mana new uh, Elder Dragon, playing that and then into Goldspan Dragon 
attacking and having two treasures. So now you have two or four mana, you know, two to four. And if you don't go three or higher, you don't have to even sack them. I think that is like a really dangerous uh, game plan for a tempo deck like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, it, you know, that's just going to set up some incredible turns. Some nasty turns. Yeah, I agree. So you already won the marbles because you're a jerk. But I'm going to come back at you and uh, try to take you down yeah, and at least win this last match. I think my dream curve is turn two Portel. Yep. Turn three Prismari Command. You know, kill a creature, make a treasure token. Uh huh. Turn four Elder Dragon, make a second treasure, two mana interaction of some kind. Yep. Turn five Goldspan Dragon, attack, sack all the th the treasures. All runs. All runs Epiphany from yeah. Portel. Attack again. You know. You, you won. The yeah. game's over. Your opponent has already scooped up their magic cards. I imagine. <laughs> All right, but instead, how, what do you think of this hand? I have uh, a couple expressives iteration. I have a frostbite and four gold span dragons. Is that good? Do I want that? Wow. I mean, it's it's <laughs> one of the best cards in your deck. Yeah. Why wouldn't I want four? Okay. I swear I shuffled this deck a lot before this, but uh, I would uh, I would do a nice pile shuffle if we were back in the real world. Uh, I will be keeping my hand. God, when's the last time you piled shuffled a deck? Um, 2020, maybe. Yeah, yeah, like some some early SCG in 2020. Yeah, in the in the long long ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. I just got to see if I can still do it. Uh, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember how it's been too long. <laughs> I don't even remember how many piles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you're keeping yours. Yeah. Don't, okay. you, don't you just do six eight? stacks of ten? Like. Yeah, yeah. You just do six. Well, that's not going to work with most of the decks I play, Rob. What am I going to well, do with the other twenty cards? All right, for us normal people. <laughs> all right, let's try this again. Okay, this looks much better. Um. Now, what do we want to get rid of? I want to just cry because I want all these cards. Um, That's okay. Just let it out. All right. I think I'm actually going to get rid of this and be slightly sad about it, but then I'm going to play an island and pass to you. Oh, I'm excited for this hand, though. Okay. I will play a Snarl, revealing a forest, and a Witch's Oven. Okay. Pass the turn. Okay, now I have a Fortel, and I'll pass to you. Forest, Trail of Crumbs, get a food. God, you're crummy. Pass the turn. Okay. Um, yeah, this seems like a good turn for expressive um, iteration. The top three. Oh, my God. Well, of course, I didn't hit a land. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, so I only get one of these cards, which is a tilt. I think I actually just want this. Um, and I'm in the bottom of your library and exile one. So I'll exile this and I'll put this at the bottom. Yep. And I do have a land, but it wasn't w the one I wanted to play. No. I have a forest and a silver smoke pool. Okay. Fast turn. All right, well, we're going to try this again. The top three. I'm going to go better this time? Uh, slightly, but not we, by a we lot. We hit a land. <laughs> yeah. So a land of two mediocre spells. Yep, pretty much. Um, so I will exile... Yeah, what a tilt. We'll exile this, and I will... Oh, tap land. Yeah, of course. Well, that's what you get for playing... Guild gates in your deck. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And then I'll play this and I'll pass to you. Well, that card so far has just been punishing. It is nice it says play, not cast on that one, though. What's up? You can play lands off the exiled card. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That this card seems great to me, though. To be honest, it, it was a it was an awkward start for me from not hitting a land off the first one. Uh, so I feel like I got a little unlucky there. But if I just hit the cards I wanted there, this would have been insane. I get in for three. Seventeen. And I will play another silver smoke pool. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. Well, we get to finally do something meaningful. Uh, I got another land. 
All right, and I will play our uh, Galazeth, get a treasure, yep. and I'll pass to you. On your end step, I will sack a silver smoke ghoul. Okay. Yeah, spicy. spicy, spicy. Go to my turn. Yep. Let's play a dark boar pathway. Okay. And giant opportunity. And what does that do again? I can sacrifice two foods. If I do, I make a 7-7. Seven, seven. Otherwise, okay. create three foods. Okay. Well, I don't like 7-7s, seven, believe it or not. Not a big fan of uh, having to deal with 7-7, seven, seven, so I'm going to tap this treasure, and I'm going to see it coming. Oh, that's a tilt. Saw that coming from a mile away, to be honest. That's the turn. Okay. Ooh. Didn't you saw any... it coming. That's why you had to ask what it did. Exactly. Thank you. Didn't have any Thanks great throwing me under that bus. <laughs> this game, which was... Uh... All right. I'm going to start with expressive iteration. Okay. We'll exile this, bottom this, put this to my hand, and I'll play this as blue. Uh, I guess that's fine. Um, do I want to get aggressive yet? Probably not. Um, yeah, I think I will just say go. Okay. On your end step, I'm going to sack the ghoul to draw a card. Okay. Feasting Troll King. The Troll of the Kings, eh? Um, I will Disdainful Stroke that. And I'll pass the turn. All right. Um, end step. I have a Prismari Command. Um, all the modes are pretty decent except making a treasure or dealing two damage. So I think I'm going to destroy one of your artifacts. It's actually interesting if I want to take out your oven or a food here, though. Um, I think I'll take out oven and then I'm going to draw two, discard two. Yep. Draw two, discard, discard. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. I think that's the first time we've cast Prismari Command on the show. I think you're right. Um, if you're trying to tap that for a gold span dragon, that's not how that's not how that, that card works. works, is it? Okay, thanks for uh, seeing that in advance. All right, let's go like this. Um, and I'll attack, get a treasure. Yeah, I'm gonna go to 13, and I will pass to you three in hand, three in hand. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> um, okay, let's sack a food to gain three life and trigger the trail. Um, yep. So I'm going to go to 16. Okay. I will select a trail of crumbs. Okay. It's pretty crummy of you. I will play a trail of crumbs. Okay. Get a food. Yep. Then I'll play a forest and a witch's oven. Okay. Then I'll go to my end step and return two silver smoke ghouls. With those triggers on the stack, I'm gonna Prismari command, destroying this, and um, you're at 16, so this is seven. Yeah, I'll just double loot. Yeah. Drop two, I will discard two lands. Okay, so those are into play untapped. Okay, that's not sure it matters, but oh, it matters, Faithless Haven. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that matters quite a bit. Yep. <laughs> All right. Hmm. So, animate. Yep. I'll attack. 
Uh, that's 11. Yep. Puts me to five. Puts you to five. Then second main, I'll crack this for this. Doesn't really matter. And then I have a Torrent Sculptor. I'm gonna exile, nothing great here. Exile this and I only get one counter on it. Round, oh, round it up, so I do get two. Okay. And I'll pass to you. And no cards in hand? I have one card. One card. Just in your lap, though? Yep, in my lap. I was, yeah. uh, I got a collection of all the cards in my deck down here and I just put the best one. Ah, oh, dang it, I, I chose wrong. <laughs> Well, that was best possible. Uh-oh. <laughs> Truly best possible. I'm scared. Play Wicked Wolf. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. I uh, will okay. target Goldspan Dragon. And I believe I get a treasure off that. No. It's, no. Yeah. Trigger on the stack. Sack of food. Okay. Trigger both trails. I'll pay for the first one. Okay. I'll find a Gilded Goose. Okay. Then I will pay for the second one. Okay. I will find an Egon. Egon. Then I will... And then this is going to be tapped. Yep. It's going to be tapped. Let's play a Pathway. I can make Green Black, play Goose Get a Food, and play Throne of Death. Okay. Um... And then I will pass the turn. Um, end step. I guess you don't have a flyer. Or you do have a flyer. I do have a flyer. Okay. End step. I will stomp the goose. On top. A draw. Um, we're a little short on snow lands or you'd be dead. So tilt. Um... Short on total lands, too, even if all your lands were snow. Yeah, true. Okay, I'll attack with these. Okay, well, I'll trade with the Haven and block the Torrent Sculptor. Okay. Go to two. Go to two, and then uh, second main, I'll play Bone Crusher, and I'll pass to you. Upkeep. Mill one. Okay. Draw. Yep. That was really good. Um, Jerk. So I guess I don't really get to get great value out of it because I've got to gain some life this turn. Uh -huh. um, but I do think playing the Troll King and getting back the other Troll King is pretty cool. That is pretty strong. Luckily, I drew a Disdainful Stroke. <laughs> Was that good? Did I want that? <laughs> You're dead. Um, I guess you can gain three, no, but you yeah, only have one blocker, yeah. Yeah, and you've got the... And I got three creatures now yeah. coming in, so... If you, just, if you just brick that turn, I think I was kind of stable-ish. <laughs> yeah, no, you gaining a bunch of life, getting getting the creatures back, and if you just had ovens to be able to... Yeah, the, uh, the Prismari commands... Prismari commands were, were insane were, there, yeah. I have to agree. Otherwise, I, I uh, would have been doing a lot more yeah. with my turns. You did just enough disruption there. This deck feels awesome. It just feels like I have so many options with with all these split cards. You know, the where it can be, you know, my four drop can be a nice removal spell. My bone crushers are already insane. You also just have so much mana. Yeah, I, I had so much mana there at the end. Like, I, I'm surprised we don't have any um, Magnus Opus here in the deck. Like. It seems like I'm just generating a ton of mana. And that two drop really helps us, you know, get land drops as well. So, yeah, that's, uh, that was powerful. Yeah. That was powerful. But, uh, I, mean, I think I needed, I needed some way to interact with my graveyard a little earlier. You know, an yeah. early Egon would have been nice. I don't have a ton. I had Meyer Triton in yeah, the deck. Yeah, there's not much besides Timur calls it as Meyer Triton plan. Yeah, yeah, and like I, I had an, uh, it's just hard to fit everything in. Yeah. You know, I thought about Meyer Triton and Timur calls the dead. I've got Egon. Mm -hmm. I've got, you know, um, Witherbloom Command that I'm trying out. Yeah. Because that also has, has a life gain that it hits. And then the Cauldron, where you can just discard them from your hand. Yep. That is interesting. And it also gives you, you know, the, the cauldron is nice with the oven because then you just sack those tokens and generate extra food. Yep. And you get to, you know, gain the one life that you need. So you like wither bloom command, gain two life and, you know, mill three. Yeah. And then you sacrifice, get a food and, and you're, you're all set.
Yeah, that's pretty interesting. But didn't really get those synergies going. Was a little slow out of the gates. And, you know, Goldspan Dragon definitely punishes those. Goldspan Dragon doesn't allow you to be slow. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. So, all right. Guessing you want to go first? Yes, I do. Wow. Well, it's just on theme with my first hand. Just another no lander. <laughs> okay. My deck is not giving me any close mulligans. So, like, all right. No Corey keeps here. You just don't have a choice. Uh, this sand looks great. Okay. Rob, you got a question for us at all? Ross, do you think Prismari Command could see any play in Arclight Phoenix decks? Um, no. Uh, the thing with Arclight Phoenix is that you're not just interested in spells, you're interested in very cheap spells. Yep. So the, the you know I've talked a lot about the cost of paying for versatility and these you know commands and charms and, and modal spells like that are more expensive than they otherwise would be for whatever thing you're picking but you you know you get paid off by having lots of optionality with them. Mm -hmm. Arclight Phoenix decks don't really care about the optionality. They're very singularly focused on just returning Arclight Phoenix as quickly yep. and consistently as possible. And so you get really punished for putting cards like that in your deck. So I, I would avoid it. I agree. Okay, I kept and bottomed one of my lands. Okay, I will play a Snarl, reveal a forest, and I will play the whatever is called Throne of Death. Okay. That's the turn. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I just have a Fable Passage and a pass to you. Mill. Okay. Um... I'm going to keep the forest in my hand for as long as I can in case I draw another Snarl. So let's play snarl, Slither snarl. Pathway into Trail of Crow. I'm going to play Gilded Goose. Get a food. Okay. That's the turn. Sounds good. All right. That was an interesting draw. Gonna play a Lava Glide pathway and stop my goose. <laughs> Not quite, but I will frostbite your goose and I'll pass to you. Mill. Okay. Oh, there's the snarl. <laughs> so close. And now we gotta play the forest and. Yeah, now I'll play trail. Okay. Go to food, pass the turn. Alrighty. I will draw, and I'll play land and pass to you. Upkeep mill. Yep. Um, interesting turn here where Corey just has three mana up. I don't think he does a whole lot with this three mana. It could have Prismari Command, Destroy Throne, Loot. Um, but it very easily can have Didn't Say Please and doesn't really punish me with like Behold the Multiverse here. has nothing in the Fortel Zone. So I think this is a turn where I'm just going to draw a card with the Throne mm -hmm. and generate a little value that way. And if that's the case, I'm going to do it now in case I draw a Goose. Okay. So let's exile this... Uh, I don't know. Exile the Wicked Wolf. I don't think it makes a difference. Okay. Uh, draw a card. Sure. And pass the turn. All right. Uh, I did a Prismari command, um, but now I have a choice between destroying a food or the throne. Throne is just a constant supply of stuff, so I'm going to do that and get a treasure. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> not so bad. Um... Now, what do we want to start with? I'm going to start with... Uh, I don't know here. Now, nah, I'm just going to play land and pass to you. No dragon, but dragon would have been awesome there. Let's uh, play a snarl. Show you a forest. Okay. And then I will play giant opportunity. Yeah, that card's uh, pretty terrifying. I don't have a ton of bounce. You know, we don't have a... a brazen Borrowers. Brazen Borrowers. So that card is actually just terrifying. Um, Corey has a counter spell. It's just deciding which one to use. <laughs> does he want to use the two mana negate, or does he want to use look, use the more versatile didn't say please? Yeah, those are some dilemmas. 
Yeah, sacrificing them too, you get two triggers. Yeah, that's just too good. I can't I can't <laughs> yeah. allow that to happen. It's really <laughs> you gotta counter it. Yeah. Uh and then I will play Dina. Okay, what does this one do again? When I gain a life, you lose a life. Okay, and that's right. Pay one sack your creature and pump a Dina for the creature's power. Okay. Pump Dina's power, I should say. All right. So I have expressive iteration here to start. Okay. Um some good options. Hmm. All right, we'll put this into exile. And this one into my hand, this one on bottom. And we'll play this and pass to you. Well, I'm not drawn particularly well. Uh, I'm going to sack a food and trigger the trail. Okay. Uh, that's also going to trigger the Dina. Yeah, so I uh, lose... You're going to lose a life. I just lose one life. Okay, yeah. I was like, God, hopefully it's not the veto effect. No. That'd be bad. So you're at 19. Yep. I'm going to go to 23. And sure. I'm going to the top two. I will... Oof. These are both good. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, but I think I gotta take the Wicked Wolf. That's a good magic card. And then I'm gonna play a forest. I will attack for one. Okay, 18. And I will play a Silver Smoke Ghoul. Okay. Um, yep, that's fine. Okay, pass the turn. Okay. You got five in hand? Five in hand. Pretty even game right now. I yeah. got a couple things in play. You got a few more cards in hand. Some good stuff going on here. Um, all right, I'm going to play a Fabled Passage, crack a couple of those. I was pulling a Ross Merriam this game and drawing all of them. Whoops. Yeah, but you also drew other lands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. To be fair, my opener was just three Fabled Passages. <laughs> all right, so it's a card. Shuffle up. And then I will foretell, and I'll pass to you. Uh, I got three in hand. Yep. I will... Mm -hmm. A little awkward against Shark Typhoon here. Uh, because it, it threatens to take out the Dina. I can sack the Ghoul to the Dina. And the Ghoul will, you know, eventually come back, right? Uh, to make that trade. But it just makes my plays pretty awkward. So I'm just going to get in with the ghoul. All right, I'll take it down to 15. Yeah. I will play a Pestilent Cauldron. Let me give this one a refresher real quick. Yeah, this one, pretty strong card. Um, okay, yep, that resolves. Okay, play a land and pass the turn. Okay. End step, I will behold. Yep. Um, could have tried to play Restorative Burst here, which would be a nice, you know, uh, you know, two for one, try to return, you know, Egon and Gilded Goose. Uh, get, get a little bit of value. But How can you play that? It's the reverse side of Pestman Call. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I was like, what? Okay, those are some excellent draws. So the the cauldron's going to draw a card immediately and then threaten to do some other stuff. Yep. All right, I'm going to untap. Draw. You scribe both of the top or? Bottom both. Bottom both yep. and then drew the nuts. And then drew the blade, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Three, four, five. I have a gold span dragon. Yep. And... 
Then I will attack, make a treasure. Yep. I'll go to 19. And I will pass to you. Okay. End step. I'm going to exile some spells. Okay. Let's say those four. Okay. Draw your card. And go to my turn. Yep. I will play Pelucranos. The Palooks. Um, I'll just ample strike that one. Uh, let's play a pathway on the green side. I'm going to try to play Wicked Wolf. And I will saw it coming up. I will attack for four. Eleven. Pass the turn. Okay. Three cards left in hand for Corey. Hopefully no all rooms epiphany. You're at sixteen, right? I'm at nineteen. I gained three 19. earlier okay. with a with a food. Gotcha. All right. Um I do have another gold span dragon. That's terrifying. And I'll attack for eight, get two treasures. It's gonna put me to eleven. Yep. And then I have a land. I'll sack one of these treasures. Uh, actually, maybe I don't play this land. Sack the treasure, play Torrent Sculptor, exile this, get two counters, and pass to you. I have a negate in hand, not a land, okay? Play around it accordingly. Interesting. Um, yeah, me at 11. Hmm. Got a lot of options. That I do. <laughs> really want a ninth land this turn so I can Pelucranos. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. Hmm. I yeah. kind of thought you did have enough to do that in fight. I was like, yeah, I'd be snapping that off. But yeah, I, I didn't see your one short. That's huge. Yeah. I am definitely one short. Hooray, because that play would have been really good. <laughs> yeah. I'm only playing, normally these lists have four uh, Castle Garen Briggs. I only have two because of the splash. A little yeah. worried about them entering untapped. And also, you know, I guess that is an ability of a creature. That still works, huh? Mm -hmm. For bringing, yeah. escaping a creature. I've just, yeah. I've never seen Castle Bar Garen Bridge to an escape anything, you know? But I guess in mono green food, they had those uh, arachnid spiders against rogues. Yep. I'm at 11, so I'm not... Yeah, I'm just looking at... You keep thinking about it, but I keep thinking about just, like, top-decking this card now. It would be insane. Yeah. You know, wow. I, I think this card is one card I completely missed. Actually, it wasn't spoiled yet, so that's probably why I missed it when I played the other as a deck, but... Yeah, that's an awesome one. Mm. Makes me... So the, the thing about wanting another land for next turn, it makes me want to just pop this... Uh, Food. This food and just try to hit a land. Um, I see a turn too. It also means I don't die to another gold span dragon off the top. Yeah. Um, but the th I've got a, a good play in my hand. But if I don't, it's 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 a feasting troll king. Okay. Uh, so if I don't hit the land, I can't cast it. Gotcha. Uh, and if I hit, you know, say I hit like well, like Wicked Wolf is no longer good if I sack the food because it can't fight the dragons or the torrent sculptor. Yeah. Um, yeah, that card's insane. I guess it doesn't have a reach. It's not that insane. It just get, <laughs> everything just gets gets very awkward. Yeah, that's close. Um, but I I think I've got to go for it. I don't think I beat this by just playing the Troll King this turn because of the Torrent Sculptor. Okay. So I'm gonna sack the food, gain three, and look at the top 14. two. Fourteen. Yep. Yeah, that's what I thought. No land. <laughs> so. 
gonna find a witch's oven. Okay. Am I gonna find a hmm. yeah, witch's oven and trail crumbs? Okay. Go second trail, sack another food. You know, try to hit the land. Yeah, putting you to seventeen does yeah. put you out of double um, gold span, but you can kind of do that anyways, right? Yeah. Um. Or I can go witch's oven and uh, like sack. I can, yeah. The, the witch's oven is going to get me a food anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take the oven. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Uh, I am going to sack the silver smoke ghoul. Okay, because it's going to come back anyway. I do. Um, oh, is it if you've gained life that turn? Yeah. Oh, so okay. it only triggers on my end step. That's fair. It's a little awkward because it, it takes away a blocker. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty happy to just. Um... No, that that doesn't work still because I can't do I can't do everything. Um... Oh, that that's how I do it. Okay, so I, I paid three for that. So let's play the oven. Okay. Then sack the ghoul for a food. Yep. Then sack the food. Okay. Trigger. Trigger trail. Pay sure. one. 17. Sure, 17. Get a forest. Okay. Um, so now this is going to enter a, a tap to the ghoul. Mm -hmm. And I can... Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to end up needing to block here and sack the ghoul to uh, to trade with the torrent sculptor. Oh, also I gained the life twice this turn, so you lose two. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So you're at nine. Uh, so if I'm going to, my plan is to use the Dina this turn and not sack the ghoul for a card. Then I might as well uh, just mill you with the cauldron. Okay. So one, it's it mills you for life. I've gained this turn. So mill six. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Okay. So one tap. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We're hoping for all runs of Pivoting off the oh, yeah. top, please. And I'm at 17, right? Yep, 17 to 9. 17 to 9, and then pass the turn. All right. Huh. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> um. All right, I will attack with these two. Get two treasures. Yeah, block with Dina. Okay. Sack yep. the ghoul. You got it. I uh, take eight. I go to nine. Yep, and I'll play Lana past you. And now... Um, do I just go for the Pelucrodos? I mean, countering either Pelucronos or the Troll King is going to be devastating. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'll play Pelucronos. Uh, I've got a Exile Six. six. Yep. So, let's go uh, four, five. Um, I'm going to leave. Got, definitely want to leave the, the Silver Smoke Ghoul. Mm -hmm. This is seven, so I get to leave one other one. I guess I'll leave the Wicked Wolf. All right, Ad Resolves. Okay, that's great. So it has 12 counters on it. Yep. And I'll play this land. Okay. And pass the turn on your upkeep. Yep. I will have Pelucronos fight a dragon. Okay, dragon down. All runs Epiphany, please. Ooh. We are... Oh, we're um, almost there. <laughs> I'll attack, get a treasure. Uh, brings me to five. I got to land and I'll pass to you. Um, draw. Mm -hmm. Actually... Yeah, I'm dead. I just have a land. <laughs> okay. I was just thinking, like, I probably should have just made a token end step and had nine. Yeah, nine. I didn't I, realize you were at nine. I was straight. But yeah, you're 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 gonna die to the you know me getting three. Yep, mm. yep, yep. Yeah, I just break those last two draws to uh, force a game three. Well, since we're so low on time, you want to do a, a fast and loose one uh, pre sideboarded? Mm, are we that low on time? Yep. Well, we got some time. Let's just sideboard live. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. You got it. I wanna. Uh, I got some. I got some cards. I want to bring. You got in. some goods. Yeah, I got some dresses. I got some skyclip shades. Oh, okay. Got some well, I'm just noticing I don't have any sideboard cards for you. I'm not sure what I'm bringing out. Yeah. This Dina doesn't seem great. We can cut that. Yeah, I'm legitimately not bringing a single card. The other ones are Shark Typhoons, and I do not want to bring those in against you. So, yeah, I'm clicking back. Well, we'll just watch you. Biggest thing for me... Especially on the play, I don't want to adjust my deck too much. I just want to, you know, do my game plan. Yeah, biggest thing for me is I just want to deal with dragons, definitely. Yeah. Dresses for counter spells are good. I think Skyclave Shade seems great. You don't exile anything. Yeah, no, um, yeah, that's tough that's, to actually kill. Yeah, oh, my, my Witherbloom commands are not very good. Yeah, no, those don't seem good. So let's cut command and then sort of trim around the edges. Yeah, yeah your Dina. giant opportunities normally against an Izzet deck I think would be really bad, but... You know, I, I have a couple brazens, so that does make it's it bad, good. but only a few. It's just not a card that you can often cast on, like, turn three underneath the... Uh, yep. The, no, no, that's not the right... Not this one. Underneath the counter wall. Yeah. You know, I've, I've sort of waited, it, uh, you know, until turn four or five, and it just kind of trades, and sometimes it, it doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to get the sort of the high variance card out of my deck. I like it. A little bit of trimming yeah. there, I think. Yeah, that's we've good. got four trails and four troll kings. We, yeah. we can go to three of each. I like and it. These are probably two of the weaker cards in the main deck. Command, not great in the matchup. Cool, cool, cool. All right, well, I'm going to be on the play and I'm going to just hopefully just beat you down badly. Like a good old turn three, uh, turn four dragon, you know, get get that other treasure, have disdainful stroke for your big play. Like just really a beating. Just like I drew it up before the match, right? Turn two foretell, turn three, yeah. you know, Prismari <laughs> command. Yeah. Uh, kill something, make a treasure, turn four, Get Elder you. Dragon, Disdainful Striker, follow up, turn yeah. five. I absolutely love this deck, though. Or, you know what? I'll settle for just keeping an opening seven. So, that... Corey, real quick. Yeah. Uh, we did have another question from newly minted VIP Estes. Okay. Uh, in the opening, you mentioned that you'd probably be casting Flamethrower Sonata more often than Torrent Sculptor, but so far mm -hmm. you've cast a Torrent Sculptor instead of the Sonata. So, is that yeah. just a function of literally those games, or do you think that maybe just this kind of matchup? It's a function of the matchup where. Every creature I target of yours, you can either make it indestructible or bring it back from the graveyard. You know, I would definitely hit like a goose or something with Flamethrower Sonata, but I've had the stomps and the frostbites. So it's just the product of these games and this matchup is a little weird for it. But you play against Lovestruck Beast and, you know, discard some big spell, you know, that that's going to be nice. And the four drop is just going to be okay. Yeah, my, my big yeah. creatures tend to come back for more. Come back for more. Uh, don't think I can keep this one lander. So All right. Send it back. My hand is sweet. Nice, maybe, but sweet. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Hey, Rob, you got another question at all for a last game of versus here? Um, I w should mention that Ross's name is currently Bucky Barnes. Bucky uh, Barnes? Yeah. Okay. I won't ask why. No, oh, well, I was going to explain it because I, I didn't know. I figured you'd get it, but I didn't think Ross would get it. Uh, I'm not not even get it. I have no uh, idea. It's because, again, people are telling you that Ross looks like the Winter Soldier, so. Oh, okay, okay. Is that his alter ego? That is his actual name. Or his real guy. Okay, okay. The man whose alter ego is the Winter Soldier. Well, we like it regardless. <laughs> um. Yeah, this is definitely a keep. Okay. Um. Am I going to? Um, I am going to get rid of the second fabled passage. All right, and I will crack this and pass to you. Okay, I've got a snarl reveal of Horus. All right, These snarls are pretty cool when you're just splashing. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I will play Throne of Death. Okay, the Death of Thrones. Done. Yep. A draw. Not a good draw. Um, I will play this land, and interesting. Then I'll just pass to you. A uh, peak meal. Yep. Play forest and pass the turn. All right. I will just draw. All right, I got an expressive iteration. And this is your turn three, so you yep. can get the divination. So this is going to be my exile card. This is going to be the bottom. Uh, yeah. and I'll put this to my that's hand. A, that's a perfect expressive iteration. Yep, pass to you. Okay, and mill again. Okay. 
the classic mill land draw skyclave shade. Of course. Uh, I'm going to play a forest and an Egon. Egon, okay. That's the turn. That's interesting. And by interesting, I mean terrifying. Um, it's very big. It's a large creature. Red spells have a hard time dealing with six sixes. <laughs> yeah, they really do. They really do. Um... Hmm. Okay. Yes, I agree. Yes, yes. Shallow and pedantic. We'll play this. I mean, I do have blasphemous axe here in the studio, so we could I could just give Corey one of those. Yeah. And then I'll pass to you. Okay. Right. Upkeep. Let's mill with the throne. Okay. Let's exile the two that aren't skyclave shade. Okay. Be gone. Draw for turn. Yep. Uh, I will attack for six. I'll take it. Bring board ten. 14. Uh, Fatal Passage Crack. That's pretty good. I'll get a Swamp and play a Pelucranos. Pelucra. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll see that coming. Yep. Pass the turn. Okay. All right, now I got land and the gold span dragon. Yep. And I'm going to attack, get a treasure. I'm at 16. Pass to you. All right, step one, find gold span dragon. Step two, figure out how to beat Egon. <laughs> okay, so I'm at 16. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. upkeep will mill with throne. Okay. I'll exile the two lands to the Egon. Sure. Draw for turn. Yep. Um... I will attack for six. Okay. I'm down to eight. I'll play a forest. Sure. Trigger the shade. Sure. Play the shade from the graveyard. Okay. Play a shade from my hand. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. All right. On tap. A draw. You know a card I could draw next turn that would be really good that uh, isn't in my deck? What? <laughs> yeah, what? I'm not going to tell you because it would tell you what's in my hand. Oh, okay, okay. But it would be really good if I could draw that card next turn. Okay. Just a nice heart of the cards. Please don't have Alvin's Epiphany, by the way. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't want you to have that one. I don't at the moment. Um, But I do have some magical cards. Yeah, you have five of them. Yep. They're all lands. All and terrible. You're very sad. Gonna have to chump block with that gold span dragon. <laughs> I don't think we're quite at that spot yet, but we're definitely getting there. Um, really cool how they got the they make the double face cards combo with it the, themselves. Actually, it ends up being so that the second copy is really good because it makes the they each make each other better. Yeah, no, I love that design. That design is yeah. sweet. And normally, legendary cards have such high diminishing returns. Yep, no, I do like that. And all runs epiphany. <laughs> four of them in his hand. Oh, uh, yeah, just just tank on the last one just to <laughs> troll you. I like that. Yeah, I'm the one playing the troll kings. All right, I'm gonna play this. You got the Gaz Galazeth. Yep. Treasure. And now I'm debating if I want to attack with Goldspan or not. Um, kind of thinking I do, but I'm also kind of thinking I don't. <laughs> oh, it's a tough one. All right. So... Yeah, I think I'm just going to say go. Play some defense. Okay. Upkeep will mill with throne. Yep. I will exile these two to the Egon. Okay. Draw for turn. Yep. It's really not fair that I didn't draw the card that's on my deck. Oh, okay. It was going to be really good. <laughs> uh, I do have a Heartless Act. Let's target the 
Prismari, so that you don't get another treasure. Yeah. This is also the card that lets you keep the treasures around, which is kind of valuable. And the difference between three, three, four, and four, four is really low. Yeah. It's worse uh, against another Prismari, but I imagine this is getting countered. Yeah, I will add mana and just saw it coming on that. Yep. Uh, and then I am going to just attack for six. See if Corey wants to give me the two for one. Or go to two, which would mm -hmm. not be great. No, it wouldn't be great. I have to agree. Um, his, his best bet might be to take it and hope to draw all around Epiphany, because that would, <laughs> that would be lethal. <laughs> I guess I can take it. The option is there. And my life total isn't... I mean, you do have some drain effects, which is pretty terrifying. I did bring out the commands. So. All right. I'll block with Goldspan Dragon and before damage, sack or uh, two red and stop. And stop. Okay. Yep. That's significantly better. Yep. Okay. Yep. That is going to do it there. Finally deal with that card. Then I have a Silver Smoke Ghoul. Okay. And I will pass a turn. All right. Now. You got three in hand now? I got three. And it's 16 to eight. Yep. One, two, three. Four. Um, I will play Torrent Sculptor, getting rid of Saw Common to make a 4-4. Four, four. Yep. Once again, not casting the other side. <laughs> and... And you're at 16? Yeah. Not great. Um... And I'm at eight. Okay. I'll attack for three. I go to 13. Here we go. Passing the turn. Gotta have a counter spell. Ooh, I'm gonna like that oven. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to... Uh, I guess I'll play this first. Play trail. Um... Sure. Get a food. Yep. Attack for six. I'll block a, a shade. Yep. And then also before damage, I'll stop a shade. So you take and three. I'll take three, yep. Brings you to five. Yep. And I will... Oof. That was really good. Maybe I a... thought there was a counter spell. Maybe I should have just attacked first. <laughs> yeah, who knows. Probably, probably would have killed the Google. That's been a very close game. That yeah. Egon has put me in so many weird spots where my draw was normally just very good. But, um, yeah, I'm going to pass the turn. Okay. A draw. Another pretty good draw. Um. All right, I'll attack for seven. I go to six. Okay. And then I will play uh, Torrent Sculptor. Saw it coming for another four, four. And I'll sack this to play Bone Crusher. Pass to you. I'm all in. Debating to trail or throne, I imagine. Yep. Um, and I'm, oh God. I don't think I was going to lose this one. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> I didn't either. But while these torn sculptors, you know, four mana four fours, and I haven't even, like, you know, had the great scenario where I got to put. An all runs in. I guess they go to the bottom with expressive alliteration, huh? So I guess I don't. It doesn't get much better than that. But I guess if I do ever get an all runs in my graveyard somehow, uh, you know, these are just gigantic. Hmm. I feel like you just have to food, don't you? Just to stay alive. Yeah, the card in my hand is a Wicked Wolf, which is uh, what's making it off. Definitely making it off. It see. being it, like I can't really just go, you know, end up draw a card, fight and tap. Yeah, because yeah. you played, got to play two creatures. Yep, yep. Um, 
So yeah, I think I've just got to sack it, the, the food on Instep and okay. Trail. You're at nine. Yeah, I will go to nine. <laughs> and I guess I'll get a forest. Exactly what the doctor ordered. I think that's better than another trail. Yep. We'll no on upkeep. Ah. <laughs> that one is not bad. Uh-oh. Um, so, hmm. Options. Yeah, I've got options. <laughs> I'm at, you have me at nine. I got you at nine and I'm at five. Hanging on by the skin of my teeth. Yeah, I think I'm going to go uh, Gilded Goose, mm. get a food. Huh? A wicked Wolf. I guess we'll play the land because I've got a trail. Sure. Uh, uh, I was going to save it for shades. but Yeah, but that's better. We'll play the Wicked Wolf, uh, target the Galazeth. Okay. I think that's better than targeting the Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, because this can trade here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, target the Galazath, trigger on the stack, sack the food to get a counter, and okay. for the trail. Sure. And um, yeah, so I can still beat, uh, I can still survive through a removal spell, which is nice. Yep. And that. do I just want to get a land for these shades, or do I want to get this Pelucranos? Probably the Pelucranos. It's pretty big. Yeah, Pelucranos is scary. I'll get that. All right, done? Yep. Okay. Draw. It's interesting. Um, well, it's hard for me to not want to go for the play that I had planned, even though this card I drew was pretty good. Um, yeah, we're just gonna go with a frostbite on the ghoul. Attacks. I'll jump a torrent sculptor yep. and go to two. Pay five, bone crusher, and then foretell this and pass to you. I'll keep mill one. Yep. That's a good one to mill. Draw. And yeah, I'm just not gonna be able to block. Yeah, because even Pelucranos on fight is still one one creature will get through. Yep. I had and a behold ball, too, but good. yeah, so I, I already had the frostbite and I was like, yeah, that play is just too good to play that. But uh, you know, it could have of course been yeah, yeah, strong. You, definitely, you you already have to. Oh, never mind. I would have won on the spot if I would have behold it. I just keep these and <laughs> frostbite and, and and brazen, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, close games. Close games. A little, a little clunky on my my deck side. I think. Yeah. I think if I want to go the graveyard route, I need a little bit more and a few more enablers. Seder Wayfinder is one you should look into. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, really cool stuff from that. This is a deck just looked insane though. Like yeah. I think this deck is going to be that that week one player again that's going to punish all these decks that are trying to fool around. And then when you get back to adventure stuff, that's kind of what pushed this deck out anyways. But there's some new toys that really could completely change that. So yeah, I think the new toys are all quite powerful. I yeah. think the the Elder Dragon is. Excellent. Just yeah, you know, I the, like that card a lot. That's the best dragon I think. Yeah, they, they were they were de those decks were definitely threat light before. Yep. You know, relying on just the adventure creatures and goldspan dragon. Yeah. When you didn't find a dragon, your deck looked not not very good. Now you can find either dragon and your deck is still gonna function, especially with the other treasure makers. Yeah. If you got you know uh, magma opus, you can make treasures with that if you want to play it, but just Prismari mm -hmm. Command. Which was I did want a uh, Magnus Opus or two, you know, yeah, like yeah, I, I, you don't want to go overboard, but yeah, there were none in this list, and I, I think that card is sweet. Yeah, I think you just want yeah. cards that give you mana sinks. Like yeah. I don't know how many Shatter Skull Smashings are in that deck. It's Zero. A little, it's yeah. a little okay. awkward in the mana base. Yeah, you can't really do Shatter Skulls or the double face cards with snow. I, I, I totally agree with that. I, but I, I did want a I little bit play more top still. bed. I yeah. think the first one is just so valuable when you have all this extra mana. Yeah. I would, I would cut a spell for it. I would honestly, I, I but, would think about just cutting beholds for Magnus Opus, just going way over the top. Like, this card is just okay, and I, I want some beef. I want some big stuff in this deck. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah. You're, you're tapping out mm -hmm. a little bit more now. The counter spells are sort of protecting your stuff. Yeah. I think in that game plan, Behold the Multiverse gets a lot worse. Yeah, and I just think that card was just really overhyped, both in Limited and Standard. I, I don't think it's been as good as people oh. thought it was, you know? It, so I think that the issue with it is not that it's bad. It's just that the homes that it's best in aren't very good. Yeah. You know, the the reactive control decks yeah. just have such a hard time with Edgewell Innkeeper. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess the one reactive control deck that that is seeing success is Rogues, and that's one that's not interested in Behold. Yeah, they their four mana is just drawing four cards. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, so it, it's just the 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 fact that Rogues is already there puts such a benchmark on other reactive control decks to yeah. be playable. You know that that's a card that could easily see play in a you know blue white or demure control yeah, deck. Yeah, and I've played a Soul Tie reactive year. one that's non ultimatum, and it was better there, but still wasn't great. You know, yeah. so it's I, not going to be a world beater kind of card. It's yeah, just a, you know, it's a glimmer. But Magnus Opus has so much text on it that it will do just some destroying. Yeah, I mean, so we saw that in match one. Yeah, I think. Uh, from my side, the snarls actually looked pretty good, and the two decks I had them in yep. which were sort of monocolor with a splash. Yep. I think that's where the snarls are going to be at their best. Uh, you know, those monocolor decks often have other utility from the random base. I had to cut the Faceless Savings from Mono White. I had to cut down on Castle of Garen Briggs mm -hmm. in the food deck. But it, the access to the second color does give you a lot of additional tools now. So that's true. That's, that's definitely true. something that you should be looking into uh, and, and potentially doing, you know, splashing off of. Fable Passage, Snarl, Pathway, one basic, yeah. you know, one to two basics, 13, 14 sources of your splash color is pretty solid. I totally agree. Yeah, some really fun stuff today. Ross takes down the show. So, Rob, we're going to thank some subs. We're going to thank some sponsors, and we're going to head out of here. Fortunately, no new subs today, but thank you to all we the rest of our subs who are yeah. still here. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit less than we would have otherwise. Slightly, but so minuscule. Yeah, yeah. five dollars yeah. less. Who, yeah, who can put a number on? Exactly. Well, they did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, take us home, bud. If you'd like to support Star City Games in another way, you can join SCG Premium. Seven ninety nine a month will get you access to exclusive content from our wonderful staff of content creators, as well as some other perks, which are five percent off of sealed product, ten percent off of singles, and fifteen percent off of supplies. So head on over to StarCityGames.com slash join dash premium and sign up today. Absolutely. And if you love the look of our Carnox gaming chairs and you want one of them as well, you can go to Carnox.com slash SCG. You can use that affiliate link to get yourself 10% off one of these awesome gaming chairs. And uh, our final sponsor is Coalesce Apparel. If you like the shirts that we wear, you can find their entire collection of t-shirts, hoodies, and stickers at coalesceapparel.shop. And be sure to use the gift code SCG when checking out to get 10% off of your purchase there as well. I gotta say, Corey, I wore the Karn shirt on Tuesday and I lost. And yeah. you wore the Karn shirt today and you lost. The Karn shirt might be rough. Might I be know. Rough. I, you know, it, it's. I tried to learn and do lessons, but you oh, know, yeah, the yeah. lesson was first to be able to count to three in order, and I, you know, I, I haven't yeah, been able to failed. master any of those. So yeah, gotta I, have to repeat kindergarten like Billy Madison. I think so. I think Hope so. Your dodgeball and, skills are up to snuff. And like Karn, I think Karn probably had to head back as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. And if you like some of the cool cards that we've been playing, especially this is a deck here. There's there's some cards I'm definitely going to be pre-ordering. If you want to pick up some cards or some sealed products you can go to starcitygames.com slash previews to get sealed products or any individual cards now as well and if you need a little bit of extra cash to pick up those cool strip saving cards or sealed product that you're looking to get scg is always buying and the process has never been easier because there are so many ways to do it you can use the buy list feature on the website you can mail your collection in and have scg do the work for you you can call and make an appointment to come into the store and if your collection is big enough scg will come to you and always remember, there's a 30% store credit bonus on trade -ins. Absolutely. And if you want to uh, still play some more uh, standard here before the new set comes out and also pick up some cash, maybe qualify for the Strict Saving Championship, we got plenty of opportunities to do it on the SCG Tour online. Great tournaments. I've been playing in them uh, the last few weeks. There are satellites every Friday and Saturday, uh, four, times a, four times a day, excuse me, all different time zones. So it really doesn't matter where you're from. You have an opportunity to play. If you go four and two or better, you qualify for the Sunday Strict Saving Championship qualifier. And if you go five and one or six and oh, you get one and two buys. And then, like I said, gives away a ton of money. You know, a lot of qualifications, some are even arena gems. You can skip these qualifier or top, trying to be top 1200 um, to play in the qualifiers. SCG just really keeps adding cool stuff to them. So if you want to check that out, go to starcitygames.com slash SCG Tour online for more details. Yes, and our final order of business is the starcitygames.com weekly sale. This week is going to be 25% off of all supplies. So if you want to get an even better discount than the premium uh, people do, now is the week to do it and check out you know, one of the perks that you get if you do want to sign up. 
You can find that sale at starcitygames.com slash sale, and it's going to be going on until 10.59 a.m. Eastern mm-hmm. time this coming Monday. Absolutely. So another really fun week of checking out Strixhaven, y'all. We still got some more time before everybody gets it on Rena. So na 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 boo boo we get to play and you don't. But that means that Tuesday and Thursday, we're going to be playing some more. We're going to be hopefully giving you some more ideas of what to play when Strixhaven actually comes out. Some really fun decks. I know I got that Is It uh, deck that I want to, or that Teamer deck yeah. that I really want to try um, with Rowan and uh, and Will. We got some other ideas still cooking. We still got it. We still got a few more left up in the in the tank. Yeah, there's a couple y'all. neurons I haven't killed yet. Exactly. There we go, everyone. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. And we will be back Tuesday at 1 p.m. So for Rob, Ross Merriam, I'm Corey Ballmeister. We'll see you Tuesday.